for the other three starters and how well they do. And tonight, we last night we really saw that. And I want to stop, start with Jaden Skaggs. I mean, she stepped up her game excellent from three-point shooting. She made four three-pointers. You and I have both talked to Coach Civils at the coaches' show and during the games and, you know, heard him talk about his expectations for Jaden Skaggs that in practice she demonstrates that she's a really good shooter. And we've not seen it for this season until last night. But last night we saw – Jaden Skaggs put on a clinic as well from outside the arc and added in there 13 points. And so, you know, to me, that's just another step forward for this starting five. Reagan Hill played a good game on the boards as well. That's two games in a row that Reagan Hill has done a good job on the board for the Lady Mustangs. So overall, when you see it, this front five, starting five for the Lady Mustangs are really developing. We knew Mickey and Claire, but now we got three other players that are developing. And then, Eric, I want to jump over and talk a little bit about the defensive side of it. You know, really, if you were overall to weigh what was the best and overall the Lady Mustangs, really it was on the defensive end. If you talk a little bit about the defensive end last night, you know, they came out, the Lady Mustangs, they put a lot of pressure on the Lady Marshals. We knew that Skylar Waller was a really good player. She's coming off a season where she had a major injury, but that we knew that she would play some really good basketball overall. And the Lady Mustangs just shut her down. I mean, when you go back out and look at it statistically, Skylar Waller finally had a basket at the last minute of the second quarter, and it was really the first scoring opportunity we had seen all evening long for, for Waller, for the Marshals, and all that was due to the pressure defense that the Lady Mustangs were putting on. It just seemed, Eric, overall that they just shook the Lady Marshals from the very beginning of the first quarter throughout the game just got them out of the rhythm. They couldn't find any passing lanes whatsoever. The Lady Mustangs had 10 turnovers in that first half, another four turnovers in the third quarter. And then finally, Coach Civils put in some of the second group and let them play, and they finished out that fourth quarter. There weren't, wasn't any more turnovers there, but 14 total turnovers that I roughly counted in that game uh, for the Lady Mustangs. So they did just as good. And really, Eric, I want to say, if I was to pick on which end of the court do the Lady Mustangs do the best, granted they did a great job offensively, but I was really, really impressed with the defense. And then the last thing, Eric, I think needs to be noted from last night's game is that second group came in the last four, five, six minutes of that fourth quarter. Uh, Coach Civils put in an all-new group there, probably about the four-minute mark, and they did a really good job. They didn't score a lot of points, but one of the things is that I was pleased with to see that second group of Lady Mustangs, really the future of the Lady Mustangs. They did a good job handling the ball. They did a good job of passing the ball down on the offensive lane, keeping the ball out of the Lady Marshall's hands. And so overall, they played a good game as well. So when you look at it last night, Eric, you know, if you sit down and say, did the Lady Mustangs play a perfect game? Well, no one ever plays a perfect game. But I've got to say, Eric, so far this year, it's the best game that we've seen, either from the Mustangs or the Lady Mustangs. They just did a great job for four solid quarters on both ends of the court. And Coach Civils has got to be happy with this early development of this team in preparation for January and February. That's exactly right. And uh, not only preparation for that, they're going to have a tough week next week at the Queen of the Commonwealth. And uh, the Lady Mustangs chatting with Coach Civils earlier this afternoon uh, really know that next week's going to be challenging. Two and two is a a positive if they can do that in Louisville with the competition they're about to face. Well, you know, you think about these tournaments that they have coming up over the uh, Christmas break here, and I think the situation you look at, it's just a, it's a development opportunity. And I think for Coach Civils, where we were two weeks ago, and Eric, I want to back up and look just two weeks ago. You know, we talked a lot about these other three starters contributing and how they were going to come along talking a little bit about the bench, and Bowling came off the bench as well as Reed last night. We need to mention that as well. They played some good basketball coming off the bench for the for the Lady Mustangs. But overall, when these when they get in these tough games they're going to get in like next week, I think, Eric, it's just a continual development for the front starting five, particularly the starting three behind uh, Claire and Nikki, and then some of these Lady Mustangs coming off the bench. So, you know, overall, Eric, I look at those type of opportunities. Maybe you walk out of there with a loss. Maybe you walk out of there with two losses. But, you know, it's one of those things that I say you don't necessarily look at the scoreboard. You look at the development of your team because that development of the team is what's going to pay off in February and March. And so the Lady Mustangs have St. Mary this afternoon under second-year head coaches here, Scott. 
the former Lady Mustang assistant coach, spent many years with this program, a uh, young St. Mary Lady Viking ball club. Yeah, Eric, you know, when I was doing my research and preparation for today's game, that really is what jumped out. I mean, when you look down the roster and you look at it overall, they have a seventh grader. They've got three eighth graders on this team. They've got a total of uh, four more freshmen. So if you take seventh graders, eighth graders, and freshmen, you got a total of seven or eight underclassmen. They're true underclassmen making up this team. You really only have one senior on the team. And then tonight we're probably going to see two or three juniors at any given time on the floor. So you're really, really looking at a young basketball team over here at St. Mary's. And so, you know, I think, Eric, that's one of the things is it should be an opportunity here for Coach Sibbles and his staff is to put in some additional players, maybe the front five, maybe, Eric, we're not going to see them all afternoon, but I think the situation is it's a great development opportunity, and that's one of the things that we talked about preseason as well is how does that bench develop for Coach Sibbles and his staff, and I think today is a second opportunity. We saw a little bit of it here at the beginning of the season with CCA, but I think it's another opportunity for Coach Sibbles to put in some players a little deeper down the bench and see how well they're going to play. Because, Eric, as we know, as you get further and further in the season, you've got to have a little bit of depth on that bench if you're going to play consistent all year long. And so that is the first game today. The second game today, McCracken County and St. Mary under Coach Chase Denson, who uh, has done a wonderful job with the St. Mary program since taking over. They're coming in, and McCracken County coming off of a loss, wanting to uh, write that really quick. It should be a fun game this afternoon. Yeah, Eric, I think that's a great opportunity for the Mustangs. They did lose last night, as you and I called that game. It's a tough game for the Mustangs overall. We've got to give a lot of cre credit to Marshall. Marshall did a good job defensively. They played strong defensively, and they played good offensively. And so for the Mustangs over, there was a little bit of struggle last night. And I think there's some things, Eric, we'll start talk pregame before the Mustangs play after a while, you know, that they need to, to right the ship on. And one of them is rebound, and they struggle particularly. They allow the Marshals to get offensive rebounds when they were really undersized. And that really surprised me. You know, so far this season, Jackson Clope, he's dominated on the boards, along with Grayson Parrish and Connor Miller helping in there. And that just wasn't the case last night. I'm sure that's one of the things we want to see an improvement on today by the Mustangs. But I think overall, Eric, you know, there were points there that they played good. I mean, they played even up in that first quarter at 14-14, and quite frankly, they outscored them by one point in the second half. It was really that second quarter that the Marshals cranked up that nine-point lead and really held the nine-point lead throughout the remainder of the game. So when you look at it, Eric, I've got to give hats off to Marshall. They played a much better game last night than the Mustangs. And so for the Mustangs to get to come back and play in less than 24 hours, I think is key to regain that momentum, regain that confidence. They got a little dent in it last night with that loss with Marshall County. So today's game's important. I think they're going to see at least two players today from St. Mary's that you and I were talking about early on that are really talented scorers. So there's a challenge here for the, uh, for the Mustangs as well in this afternoon's game. That's exactly right. And so those are the two matchups coming before us today. Let's take a look at this first one. I know you've got some stats uh, for this one. Let's take a dive into what you have for this first game. So let's just take a look at where the Lady Mustangs are so far this season. I think, Eric, that's one of the things we can take a few moments and talk about. And, you know, this team is getting better and better as I talk about. You know, we know that Claire and Mickey came into this season, really the foundation, the cornerstones of this team. And they've proven what we know about both those young ladies throughout the season so far. Uh, Claire's averaging 25 points a game. Uh, Mickey Buchanan's averaging nearly 18 points a game. And then we've talked a little bit already about these three additional starters, three new starters overall for the Lady Mustangs. And Ava Hughes, she's an eighth grader. As we know, she plays some great basketball. She's five foot six. She does a good job handling the ball. There have been some scoring performances by Ava. Back in that Henderson County game, she put up 14 points. And so, you know, that's her best game so far from a scoring standpoint since that Henderson game. She's been a little quieter from the scoring standpoint. So she's one I hope to see her scoring part of her game continue to improve. The other one we want to talk a little bit about on the underclassmen is Reagan Hill. You know, Reagan stands nearly six foot tall. She's playing center for the Mustangs. Last game here at Strawberry Hill, she had eight rebounds. 
That's what we want to see out of Reagan is a lot of rebounds. She also knocked down six points. I think she had four points last night and probably similar number of rebounds uh, down there against the Lady Marshalls. So we're seeing Reagan Hill begin to dominate in the paint, and that's one of the things for this team to be successful. We've got to see that improvement of Reagan Hill in the paint. The other person on that team is Jaden Skagg. She's a senior, and Jaden is playing some good basketball. You know, Coach Sibbles, as I mentioned, he continues to say she's a good shooter. And last night she had a breakout game with 13 points, 12 of those coming on four three-pointers. So Jaden Skaggs stepped up her game. And then the one thing, Eric, I forgot to mention earlier, you know, Bowen and Reed both came off the bench. Those two young ladies played good basketball off the bench as well. You know, you hear a lot of talk about the talent that Bowen has. There were a couple nice cuts she made to the basket and some nice shots. So overall, Eric, I think there is some development in that bench. You begin to see that development over the last two games, and you see the development of these other three starters. So I, I think overall, Eric, when I look at it, the Mustangs are shooting pretty good from the field. These starters are shooting right around 46, 47 percent from the field. From the three-point range, Eric, is really where the, a little bit of the downfall up until last night when Jaden Skaggs was, I think, four for five out at the arc. The Lady Mustangs have been struggling. They've been shooting about 24 percent across the starting lineup from outside the arc. So I think we'll see that stat improve a little bit, particularly after last night's shooting from Jaden Skaggs. From the free throw line, the Lady Mustangs are doing great. They're up nearly 80%, really around 77% across the starters. So they're shooting good from the free throw line. And then, like I said, from a rebounding standpoint, uh, Mickey Buchanan's leading the way. She's almost averaging eight rebounds per game. And then, like I said, Reagan Hill stepping up her game. She's averaging six rebounds per game. So, you know, between Reagan and Mickey Buchanan, the two 5'11 players playing in the paint for the Lady Mustangs, they're almost averaging about 14 to 15 rebounds per game. And in, in girls basketball, Eric, that's a great stat for the Lady Mustangs. And so that is the first matchup for tonight. As uh, McCracken County and St. Mary getting sent, let's take a look at the Brandon Clifton All-State Insurance for Success. And for the Lady Mustangs, it is the continued growth on offense that they have really been doing of Skaggs, Hill, and Hughes. Yeah, Eric, you know, I talked about it over the last two games. You know, I wanted the game before that we had here at Strawberry Hill against Owensboro, those three Lady Mustangs came up with 17 points. I think that was key. You know, last night I took a look at between the three of them, they scored 23 points against the Lady Marshals, a really good basketball team. And I just want to see that continued growth. I think when you look at the execution of the Lady Mustangs offense, it takes five players. And granted, you got two star players in Claire and Mickey, but these other three have got to continue to grow. And tonight, Eric, I'd like to see a good performance across the board from those three starters on the offensive end of the court. Also, former Kraken County, more con contribution, excuse me, from the bench, including Bowen, Reed, and Wirt. Yeah, and, you know, we just talked about it. Bowen seems to be right now the first person that Coach Sibbles is bringing off the bench. She's good at handling the ball. Like I said, she's got a quick step to the basket. We saw that a few times last night. So she's got a good game as far as driving it to the basket. The other one is Reed. She came in. She played some underneath last night. So she's another one that can contribute it from a rebounding standpoint and also playing good basketball inside the paint on the offensive end. And then you look at Ward. You know, one of the things about Ward is she's quick. You know, she's only probably, I'm going to give her four foot ten, Eric, at best. But we've seen her handle the ball. She's quick. She's low down on the court. She's hard to steal the ball from. And I think the situation is there's times that she's got to be able to come in that game and give maybe Claire or Ava a little bit of a break and be the ball handler for the Lady Mustangs. I think if you can get production out of these three young ladies, I think that will begin to develop that bench for the Lady Mustangs. And last but not least, well, executed fast break opportunity. Yeah, Eric, and that's a continuation from last night. You know, Coach Sibbles has talked to you and I. He wants that to be part of his scoring uh, portfolio is how well the girls get fast breaks, bring the rebound down, get it down court quickly, and get easy points. I mean, Claire Johnson dominates at that, and we want to see that continue tonight. To Brandon Clifton, All-State Insurance for success. We are set for our national anthem tonight which is brought to you by Rudy's Farm Center, your locally owned farm industrial and hardware store in Kemmel. Go see Rudy's Farm Center, 10 minutes from the McCracken County High School campus on Highway 60 in Paducah. Here is our national anthem.
Our national anthem brought to you by Rudy's Farm Center, your locally owned farm, industrial, and hardware store in Kevel. As eight in the front, our public address voice of Strawberry Hills Pharmacy Arena this afternoon. Before we do that, let's look at the Sailor Connection text hotline. Is it's uh, uh, Scott Senior and Carol Simmels listening in saying go Mustangs. The Skaggs crew is listening in. They are here as well as Jaden uh, Skaggs family. Good to hear from you all as well. Let's listen to the starting lineups as the Lady Mustangs about to be introduced. And now let's get starting lineup for your Lady Mustangs. First, the senior, we're number four. Starting lineups for tonight is McCracken County and St. Mary getting set to square off in a rare Saturday afternoon contest. It's uh, not often that we are on air here at home for a district matchup on a Saturday afternoon. In fact, in 11 years of doing this, I cannot say I recall a Saturday afternoon district matchup before, but alas, here we are. Yeah, Eric, you know, it's nice. I mean, it's a Saturday afternoon. It's not a bad day at all. We've got a pretty decent crowd here starting out for this girls' game. I'm assuming this crowd will build as it leads towards the the uh, Mustangs playing here in a little bit. So I think it's a pretty good group out here overall for fans so far at Strawberry Hill. Good start to a Saturday afternoon. If you're sitting at home and you don't know what you're going to do on Saturday afternoon, come out here and watch both the Lady Mustangs and the Mustangs play this afternoon. Indeed, and we are underway. The Lady Mustangs start with the basketball, and it moves towards uh, the right-hand side of the floor. Ava Hughes for three, and it's perfect. Eric couldn't call that any better. You know, we want to see Ava Hughes score some tonight, and she scored in the first 10 seconds of this first quarter. And so the Lady Mustangs jump out to a 3 to nothing lead. St. Mary on the return as it goes towards the left-hand side to Lorch. Baseline drive shot, no good. Rebound comes down to Buchanan. Outlet up the floor goes to Claire. Right-hand layup, perfect. And, Eric, there's the other part of that offensive game we talked about was fast breaks. And Mickey threw that the length of the court to Claire. As it is now 5 nothing, Lady Mustangs. 7-15 in the first. Ava Hughes the steal. Up the floor to Claire. Right-hand layup is good. Quickly, it is a touchdown, seven to nothing for the Lady Mustangs. Lady Vikings on the return off of a screen. It's Clements and had it poked away for a moment. It's loose. Clements gets it back in front of the McCracken bench, and she's in trouble. It's a jump ball that will stay with St. Mary. Yeah, Eric. You know, one other thing, just for the folks listening at home tonight. Not only is this a young St. Mary's team, but the must the Lady Mustangs have a lot of height advantage yes. over St. Mary's here this here this afternoon. Lady Vikings possession. Clements on the right-hand side to Kreider. And goes back to Clements, swung towards Lorch. She takes a drive in towards the left-hand glass. No good. Rebound comes back to Lorch, put up and in. Eric, that was a nice play by her. She did a great job towards getting that offensive rebound and putting it back up over Reagan Hill. It will be Buchanan straight away. She fires a three. No good. Rebound comes back, though, to St. Mary. And a chance for the Vikings to do just that. It will be Mason Clements for the Lady Vikings as Clements uses a left-hand dribble, stops, turns, gives it off to Lorch. As Lorch behind the back dribble, picks up a dribble in some trouble, and it's going to be a jump ball. It will go back to McCracken County. Yeah, Eric, you really see down here on the defensive end, the height advantage for the Lady Mustangs is just dominating, just tying up the players from St. Mary's and not getting them in any passing lanes whatsoever. As want to give a shout out to Sheila Davis is listening in as the shot is perfect from Claire Johnson from three. She's got seven out of the gates. Also, her daughter, Bailey Bradley, is watching. And so Sheila does not have sound on YouTube. Bailey, she may need your help. As uh, maybe I can connect you two to help her on that. As it is a turnover by St. Mary, it will go back to McCracken County. Always good to hear from our faithfuls every single game. They have such great support 
for McCracken County High School. 10 to 2, Lady Mustangs on top as Hughes goes into the short corner. Nice pass down low. Hill's layup is good. Eric, that was nice execution on offensive end from Mickey to find a Reagan Hill just cut into the basket there for a wide open layup. St. Mary on the return. Lady Vikings in a trap, and it's trying to get rid of it. It will be off the foot of a Lady Viking back to McCracken County. We did solve the Sheila Davis. Uh, she figured it out. She's an engineer at uh, the YouTube. She got it. It's good to hear from you, Sheila, on the Sailor Connection text online. Didn't mean to cut you off, Jimmy. We'll finish that thought in a moment. Buchanan, down low to Hill. Layup's good. Eric, that's another. I mean, one of the things is that's two times in a row that Mickey has found Reagan Hill down in the paint for just a wide open layup. And so it's nice interior passing we've seen so far in this first quarter by the Lady Mustangs. Lady Vikings on the return, but it was almost picked off. It's going to be a foul on McCracken County. I think they called that on Hughes. Yep, Eric, I think that's correct. I think she was guarding the uh, St. Mary's player there and just reached in a little too much and caused that foul. And so it is going to be St. Mary. The possession is Kreider. Tried to pass it down low, taken away by Hughes. Up the floor it goes to Skaggs. Right hand layup is good. Jaden Skaggs. Her first basket of the game. Lady Mustangs up 16 to 2. It will be St. Mary the possession as it's nearly taken away. In fact, it is. Skaggs up the floor as it's a right hand layup that is perfect by Johnson. She's got nine. 18 to 2. Lady Mustangs. This game, it is most definitely a lopsided game. It's just talent discrepancy. But Coach Asir Scott has a lot of things that have this rolling in the right direction as McCannon gets a steal up the floor to Johnson. Layup's good. Is a timeout for a Sear Scott. She is having a lot of youth on her ball club, and with that much youth against such a talented ball club in McCracken County off of a state championship run, uh, it is going to be tough. It, it is, Eric. You know, it's a little bit of an unfair matchup, but like I said, you know, for St. Mary's, these young ladies, it's a good learning opportunity for them. I mean, they're seeing some of the top players in the region. When you see Claire and Mickey on the court, you're seeing a team, like you just said, that came off a state championship run last year and has three new starters on here. And so far, we've seen the talent of those three starters for the Lady Mustangs and Hill and Hughes and Skaggs as well. So overall, they're just uh, there's a little bit uh, different in the level of skill set here between these two teams. But... Lady Vikings are playing hard. i got to give them credit. I think the situation is when they pick up their dribble, there's just too much defense for them to get any passing opportunities down on the offensive end. As the Lady Mustangs will have a new four come in at the next timeout, and that timeout will be right now as it goes out of bounds off St. Mary over to McCracken County. Yeah, Eric, you know, we expected uh, Coach Civils to have an opportunity to play this second group some, some this afternoon. I'll be honest with you, I didn't expect it in the fourth minute of the first quarter, but, you know, when you're up already uh, 20 to 2, it gives you an opportunity here for some of these young ladies to come off the bench, see how well they're playing, and help develop the game. And it'll pay off sometime later in the season when some of these players can come in and fill in for the starters. Ava Hughes, a baseline drive. Her short jumper is short. Rebound comes back to St. Mary. Lady Vikings on the return as Mason Clements throws it up the floor, but in front of Vaughn, it will go out of bounds, and it will go back to McCracken County. More of an intimate crowd today. Smaller numbers, but not bad for a Saturday afternoon. It is going to be Ava Hughes into the front court as Hughes angles towards the right-hand side, goes to Word in the corner. As Word goes back to Hughes, it looks to be man-to-man -man defense from St. Mary. Actually, nope, matchup 2-3 zone. It is going to be on the right side. Hughes splits a double team all the way to the rim. Layup's good. Eric, for that eighth grade, that was a nice drive by Ava Hughes there. She took that from out to perimeter and drove it all the way to the rim. Lady Mustangs up 22-2. Lady Vikings on the possession. With it is Maddie Alt. Now goes to Vaughn. Back to Alt. 2-3 zone for McCracken County. Is Alt through her hands. It goes out of bounds. Back to McCracken County. That, Eric, looked like it was tipped by Bowl, and it was really a tipped pass there, and then it went off the Lady Viking there to go out of bounds. So... Good play by Bowen there to, def to do good defense against that pass play. Lady Mustangs possession. Lazaria Bowen 
to Swinford. Left side to Hughes. Pump fakes, penetrates into the corner. There's a baseline drive coming from Reed. Shot no good. It will go over the backboard and over to St. Mary. Eric, that was a good play by Ava. I mean, she found Reed wide open there, driving down the baseline. It's just a little bit of a missed opportunity there for Reed to put in an easy basket, but good passing play by Ava Hughes. It will be Lady Viking possession. As it goes now towards the left side to Alt. As Alt, baseline drive, shot no good. Rebound comes back to McCracken County. Up the floor, Lazaria Bolin all the way to the rim. Her layup off the glass, no good. Rebound comes back to Bolin, put up no good. Rebound to St. Mary. Lady Vikings on the return. It is 22-2. Lady Mustangs in control. Two minutes in this first quarter. Bolin gets the steal. Bolin all the way to the other end as the left-hand layup's good, and she's fouled. Eric, you know, we talked a little bit in pregame about Bolin. Coach Sybils played her some against the Lady Marshals last night. We saw her quickness. We saw it right there on the play. It was a nice steal, a nice drive to the rim. She, she provides a lot of quickness off the bench for this Lady, Lady Mustang team. As the free throw from Bolin, no good, but nice job by Reed. But she traveled with it. It will go back to McCracken County. I'm sorry, to St. Mary, excuse me. And so Lady Vikings the ball. Lady Mustangs a 24-2 lead. As it was poked away for a moment by Bolin, recovered though by the Lady Vikings. With it for the Lady Vikings is Clements. As she picks up her dribble, looks to go cross court. She does. Lorch down low, poked away, out of bounds off St. Mary over to McCracken County. 24-2. Lady Mustangs in control. Here late in the first quarter. Lady Mustangs. It is going to be Word going off of a screen. Now straight away is Word. She'll fire a left side three and bury it. Eric, that almost touched the rafters there from Ward. That was, <laughs> she's, uh, she may be small in stature, but she puts a lot of arc on that shot. Sure does, <laughs> and it works. And so that makes it. 27-2, then a right side jumper by Alt is perfect. Makes it 27-5. Lady Mustangs by 22. Minute left in the first as Bowen off the glass, no good. Rebound comes back to St. Mary. On the return, it's Matty Alt. As Alt straight away now throws it towards the right side. And then poked away by Bowen. As Bowen gives it up now to Shelburne. Up on the left-hand side to Word. As Word goes back to Shelburne, top of the key. Back to Word, swung left side to Bolin. Her three on the way is no good. Rebound comes back to Shelburne, back to Word. Word in the corner now to Swinford. Swinford, a baseline drive. Her reverse layup just couldn't quite get it to go. Out of bounds off McCracken County. Over to St. Mary. Eric, I like that Megan Swinford's thought process. She drove that straight down the baseline. Tried to come underneath the basket for a reverse layup. Just came up a little bit short on the uh, backboard there. So St. Mary with the ball as the Lady Vikings had to try to get it towards the left side, but it's taken away by Swinford up the floor to Bolin. Bolin finds word, but it's poked away last second. It will stay with McCracken County. Eric, I like the passing so far out of this second group. They're doing a good job looking down court to find the open player, and right there, Bolin did a good job finding Ward cutting towards the basket. And so it is in to Word. Uh, she tried to get it back to Bowen, but it's taken away by St. Mary. Barnett, and that will do it for the first quarter. After one quarter of play, it's all McCracken County right now, 27 to 5. And that's kind of what we expected that first quarter to be overall, Jimmy. It's uh, Lady Mustangs. A lot of faces in that first quarter. And uh, overall, good start for the Lady Mustangs. Yeah, Eric, I mean, I think you saw a really quick start when that starting five was out there. I mean, they played four minutes. They put up 20 points. I think all five of them uh, scored points there in that first four minutes. So, you know, I think one of the things is that you've got to ask for Coach Sills. I mean, one is he wants to give, you know, the, the players off the bench an opportunity to play here. And I think the other thing is it's a good thing for Coach Sibbles, meaning so far he's only allowed the starters to play for four minutes. And you've got to ask the question, they just played last night. I mean, they played a little less than 24 hours ago, and you don't want these uh, starters to get tired. So really it's a good opportunity. they got a little bit of practice time in here in the first four minutes. And then, you know, I'll be surprised, to be honest with you, if Coach Sibbles puts them in any more at all this afternoon and just lets that starting five who really played throughout the night last night 
against the Lady Marshals and played a really intense defensive game just to allow those five starters to sit on the bench the rest of this game and rest. And like I said, this is a development game. This is a great opportunity to develop the next three, four, five, maybe six or seven players uh, for Coach Civils coming off the bench. And so the Lady Mustangs on top right now, 27 to 5. Is it will be St. Mary the possession. And we're underway here in the second quarter. Boys game will follow this one. Make sure you stick around for that. Should be a pretty good game here for the second game today. And it's knocked out of bounds off St. Mary back to McCracken County. Eric, one thing I got to stand corrected for all the fans listening home. I know why I'm not the coach. Because for the fans at home, uh, Coach Civils has a starting five back on the floor here after the start of this second quarter. And that's why he's head coach of this Lady Mustangs team. As Skaggs buries the right side three. Once again, she is red hot this weekend. It has been a phenomenal weekend for Jaden Skaggs. And then a steal from Claire Johnson. Johnson right side to Hughes. Right hand layup is good. I do like the thought process from Coach Civils because you don't have enough of the game till Wednesday. Or Tuesday, I'm sorry. I guess good competition. You do not want your team having time off between Saturday and Tuesday. But uh, I bet we do not see much of them in the second half as it is St. Mary the possession. As Clements picks up her dribble, goes on the right-hand side, now straight away to Alts. Alts in a double team and throws it off the Lady Mustangs right to Coach John Howard. <laughs> he made a nice catch there he on sure the bench. sure did. Credit to Coach Howard on that. <laughs> and St. Mary, a couple of substitutions. St. Mary, the possession. 32 to 5. Lady Mustangs in control. As a trap on the left side, Hughes and Skaggs going to tie it up, and we'll go back to McCracken County. <coughs> Lady Mustangs in control, 32 to 5. It's a good point made as we'll finish that in just a moment. Down low, nice pass as a shot no good by Reagan Hill. And so that will send Reagan Hill to the foul line to shoot two. It's uh, another chance for starters to get recognition against the coaches in the second district for tournament teams, all that stuff as well. That's true. I mean, you know, one of the things is if you did really only allow the starters to play four minutes, you know, it, it would affect one is statistically. I mean, Claire and Mickey put up a lot of points per game. That certainly stands out when you look at them if you only allow them to play four minutes in this game. Certainly would change the stats a little bit for the starting five and, and be a little bit of a misconception there overall. I want to thank Matt Rudy for that point. Uh, Rudy's Farm Center, you heard us mention earlier, 10 minutes from the McCracken County High School campus on Highway 60. It's Buchanan, a layup is good. Lady Mustangs up 35 to 5 with six minutes here in the second quarter. As it is going to be for St. Mary Caroline Kreider. Swung on the left hand side to Lorch. As Lorch is in a double team and it's taken away by Hill. But Cannon, baseball pass up to Johnson. Johnson able to save it inbounds, but it goes to St. Mary. A little bit too much on the pass. A little bit of a laugh between Johnson and McCannon. It will be Maddie Alts. A baseline drive. She's cut off and in a lot of trouble. She. Throws it away. Goes back to McCracken County. Yeah, one thing, Eric, for St. Mary's, Maddie All is a pretty good ball handler. I think the situation is right now defensively she's getting covered by Claire Johnson and Mickey Buchanan. That's just a tough pair right there to try to dribble the ball for. Lady Mustangs up 35-5. to five. Johnson crosses it over a couple of times out top. Nice pass to Hill. Her layup is good, and she's fouled. Eric, you continue to see good execution from the Lady Mustangs, from this starting five in particular, just the way they pass the ball away on, on the offensive end. I've talked about all afternoon how well they're doing, for, particularly between Mickey Buchanan and Reagan Hill, passing the ball in, from the interior in, inside the paint. And so the free throw no good. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. 
As it comes towards the left-hand side, that is to O'Neill. I'm sorry, it is to Lorch. As Lorch into a double team, in a lot of trouble, Skaggs gets it, and she's pushed down. It will go a foul on St. Mary. <coughs> Lady Mustangs up 37-5. to five. It is going to be a crossover by Johnson. Left side to Hughes. Spot up left side three. Perfect. Eric, Ava's having a good game shooting outside the arc so far this afternoon. Yes, she is. Just an eighth grader from McCracken County. And St. Mary, the possession is a new five set to check in for the Lady Mustangs in a moment. It is going to be poked away. Stolen by Claire Johnson. Johnson races in front of the pack. Layup's good. 42 to 5. Lady Mustangs on top. And stolen again by Johnson. It's Johnson. Nice spin move. Layup's good. Eric Claire continues the dominance under the basket on these fast break points. We talked about it last night at Lady Marshall's game. She continues it here in the second quarter against St. Mary's. Lady Vikings on the return. Sims left side. Now straight away it goes to Kreider. Kreider into the lane. Her jumper's up and good. Lady Mustangs on the return. On the basket is Hill. Layup is good. So Hill finishes at the rim. And substitutions coming in. New five for McCracken County. And a new four for St. Mary. Yeah, Eric, so the uh, starting five have played four minutes in the first quarter, four minutes here in the second quarter. Both times, Eric, if I calculate correctly, I think they've put up about 20 points in each of those four-minute opportunities they've had so far in this game. That's right. As St. Mary the possession. Lady Vikings trailing 46-7 to to McCracken County. It is going to be Alts who throws it away into the first row back to McCracken County. So the Lady Mustangs have it up 46 to 7. As it is going to be Bowling on the right hand side. Goes now straight away to Swinford. As Swinford gives it now to Word. Word to Bowling. As Bowling gets between two defenders, her running floater is good. Eric, she really likes that move. Bowling loves that kind of Euro step. Like I said, we saw it twice in last night's game. We've seen it a couple times here so far this afternoon. 48 to 7. Lady Mustangs in control. Three minutes, second quarter. Lady Vikings with it is Alts on the left hand side. Picks up her dribble and gives it off. Nope, keeps it. Now she does and gets it back. Alt, jumper, no good. Rebound comes down to McCracken County. Lady Mustangs on the return as Bowling. Into the front court. Goes to Word straight away. Word. Picks up her dribble. Now in some trouble. Goes straight away. But it's poked away and stolen by St. Mary. 48 to 7. Lady Mustangs. It is going to be Alt. And then throws it off her teammate. But gets it back. Alt gives it to Clements. As Clements straight away. Thought about a three. Goes to Alt. And far side of the floor now to Vaughn. And then taken away by Word. Word up the floor to Bolin. As Bolin, a baseline drive. Her floater's perfect. Eric, she's just got that shot down. That's his uh, signature move by a Bolin right there. That's the second time we've seen it in the last two possessions. Just a freshman. And that makes it 50 to 7 now. Lady Mustangs with a minute 38 here in this second quarter. Lady Vikings possession. It is going to be Clements. And poked away for a moment, comes back to the Lady Vikings, and it's a double dribble against St. Mary. Lady Mustangs possession. Bowen to Word. And the Lady Mustangs have it up 43. Swinford. Met by a triple team. Turns, gives it to Word. Word to Bowen. 
Now down low, nice pass. Reed's layup is good. Oh, man, that was well thought out. Eric Bowen found Reed wide open down there in the paint. That was that was a nice pass by Bowen. 52-7, to seven, Lady Mustangs. It's a straightaway three, no good. Rebound comes down to McCracken County. Lady Mustangs on the return. Word. Now straight away as it is to Shelburne. Down low, try to get it to Reed, but it's deflected to Word. Back to Shelburne. Shelburne straight away to Swinford. To Word. As off of a screen, Word. Nice Euro step. Layup is good. Oh, Eric, man, that was a nice drop by Ashley Ward. That looked a lot like Claire Johnson. The move she made right there at the rim to get that up for an easy layup. 54 to 7. 23 seconds left in the second quarter. As it's poked away and stolen by Bolin. As Bolin picks up her dribble, gives it off to Swinford. Swinford to the rim, puts it in. Oh, nice job by Megan Swinford. One of the things is, Eric, this second group has done a great job in the second half of this second quarter driving the ball to the rim. 56-7, to seven, a three at the buzzer's no good, and that does it for the first half. After one half of play, Lady Mustangs on top of the Lady Vikings, 56-7. to seven. Halftime scoring. Estes Kyron practice second half adjustments next, 99.5 The Fan. Craig Culver on Culver's Salted Caramel Concrete Mixers. Summer just isn't complete without this treat. We take our frozen custard and add salted caramel. Then pick your favorite mix in. Cookie dough, brownie pieces, or how about Reese's Peanut Butter Cup? We spin it by hand. I love seeing that caramel swirl through the custard. There it is. Come on in for the Culver's Salted Caramel Concrete Mixer. Welcome to Delicious. Stop in at Culver's on Highway 60 in Paducah. If you live with pain, you have good days and bad days. You deserve a pain-free life. And the first step is talking with your doctor about pain management with Dr. Ferdinand Salvacion at the Orthopedic Institute of Western Kentucky Pain Center. Dr. Salvacion specializes in pain management and will work with you to get you back to those good days. Talk to your primary care provider about pain management with Dr. Salvacion at the Orthopedic Institute of Western Kentucky. Taking care of your family isn't always easy, so we make sure getting care when you need it is. With Baptist Health Urgent and Virtual Care, we bring you more options and greater convenience too. With video visits available 24-7 and online check-in through MyChart for in-person visits. To check in online or to set up a video visit, go to baptisthealth.com slash care anywhere. At CFSB, we're not just a bank, we're your neighbors and friends, but what truly sets us apart is our commitment to community. Join us in supporting local initiatives, from schools to charities, and celebrating what makes our home special, because together we help our community thrive. Experience banking with a heart, where your needs are heard and your community's growth is our priority. Visit us online at yourlifecarebank.com, CFSB, member FDIC. Rudy's Farm Center is your locally owned farm, industrial, and hardware store in Keppel. Now, the Rudy family is proud to be a part of Mustang Nation. Why don't you come out and enjoy a bag of famous popcorn? It's just 10 minutes from the school campus out on Highway 60. While you're there, take a good look at the selection of Traeger wood pellet grills, a great addition for your tailgate party. At Rudy's Farm Center, down Highway 60 in Keppel. There is a lot of confusion surrounding the Employee Retention Tax Credits, or the ERTC. Many have said that the program has been stopped or shut down, but that is just not true. CS Business Consulting has personally consulted and advised with the IRS that they are still accepting applications and time is running out. CS Business Consulting in Paducah, Kentucky has filed for over $135 million in credits for their customers. Contact us today to find out if you are eligible and qualified to file for these credits. Learn more at CSBI. We understand that life happens and sometimes you need a little financial boost. That's why at C-Plant Federal Credit Union, we offer low rate loans tailored to your needs. Whether it's a car loan, a personal loan, or anything in between, we've got you covered. Learn more at cplant.com or visit any of C-Plant Federal Credit Union's nine local branches. Member NCUA, equal housing lender. 
Has your team star gone cold from outside? Is the opposing team hot from everywhere? Then visit MrCool.com today. You'll find heating and cooling solutions your home needs, like with our flagship DIY mini split heat pumps. Perfect for your garage, office, or with our five zone system, your whole home. It's really up to you. You're the play caller at your house, right? Right? Visit MrCool.com today for your HVAC needs and beat discomfort with the full core press from an innovative Mr. Cool HVAC system. Burrito After Dark is Paducah's new favorite Tex-Mex spot. Delicious burritos, trashy nachos, maxed out nachos, shrimp tacos with fresh cooked shrimp, and it's all customizable. Wrap up all that great food with some live entertainment, and you've got the perfect girls' night or date night. Burrito After Dark isn't just for adults. Families are always welcome. They're the home of daily fresh-made salsa and guac. And if that wasn't enough, book your next event at their 80-capacity space. Burrito After Dark in the old Fat Moe's downtown Paducah. Discover the difference that comes from a financial partner committed to building better tomorrows. I'm Darren Rudolph with Baird Private Wealth Management in Paducah. As a provider of trusted financial services in Paducah, Baird is committed to making the future brighter for you and for our community. That's why we support local organizations like United Way and West Kentucky Fellowship of Christian Athletes, because we care about Paducah. Discover the Baird difference. Visit paducah.bairdwealth.com. Flooring is incredibly important when it comes to sports. It's also incredibly important when it comes to your home or business. You gotta see Flooring America for a full line of residential and commercial carpet, vinyl, laminate, area rugs, and custom tile. Their professional installers are fully insured. They have the area's largest selection of quality floor coverings for integrity, quality, and professional service. See Greg Dilworth at Flooring America, 5150 Heartland Drive, flooringamericapaducah.com. Christmas shopping, running your budget low? McDonald's can help. For a real deal, look for a buy one, get one for $1 with the purchase of a McDouble, a McChicken, or a four-piece nugget. And for breakfast, you can still have a buy one, get one for $1 with a sausage biscuit, a sausage McMuffin, or a sausage McGriddle. And don't forget your peppermint mocha. That will get you in the holiday spirit. Have last-minute shopping to do? McDonald's can help with that, too. Gift cards are always a perfect fit. Get yours today and have a very Merry Christmas from McDonald's. At CFSB, we're not just a bank. We're your neighbors and friends. But what truly sets us apart is our commitment to community. Join us in supporting local initiatives, from schools to charities, and celebrating what makes our home special, because together we help our community thrive. Experience banking with a heart, where your needs are heard and your community's growth is our priority. Visit us online at yourlifecarebank.com. CFSB, member FDIC. Greg Culver on Culver's Salted Caramel Concrete Mixers. Summer just isn't complete without this treat. We take our frozen custard and add salted caramel. Then pick your favorite mix in. Cookie dough, brownie pieces, or how about Reese's Peanut Butter Cup? We spin it by hand. I love seeing that caramel swirl through the custard. There it is. Come on in for the Culver's Salted Caramel Concrete Mixer. Welcome to Delicious. Stop in at Culver's on Highway 60 in Paducah. Back here at Strawberry Hills Pharmacy Arena on the campus of McCracken County High School. Lenny Mustangs up at the half, 56 to 7 as we look at the first half scoring. And once again with that, we welcome back Jimmy Garrett. So we'll take a look at uh, St. Mary's Lady Vikings first. Uh, Maddie Alt, she had a three-pointer there, so she's got a total of three. A Caroline Kreider, who started as well, she has two. And Olivia Lorch, she has two for a total of seven points. Uh, so far for the Lady Vikings. Down on the Mustang side, a lot of Lady Mustangs on this scorecard tonight, Eric. Uh, Claire Johnson's leading the way with 17 points. We know a majority of those came right at the basket on some easy layups. The only other player so far tonight for the Lady Mustangs in the double digits is Ava Hughes. She's having a great game so far. She scored five points in both the first and second quarter for a total of 10. Looking down the scorecard the rest of the way, Megan Swinford, she has two. Uh, Jaden Skaggs has five. She continues on that scoring that she started just a couple of games back. Then you look further down, uh, Jalen Reed, she's come in. She has two so far. Lazaria Boland, she has six. 
Uh, Ashley Ward, who's also been playing in the second group that's been coming off the bench, she has five, and Mickey Buchanan tonight has only two points. So a little quiet night for Mickey Buchanan, but one of the things is, Eric, we know Mickey Buchanan's got a number of assists. She's made some nice passes so far to Claire Johnson, some nice passes inside the paint over to Reagan Hill. So even though Mickey doesn't have her normal higher point count, that we see from Mickey Buchanan. She's been, a nu she's been a number, she's had a number of assists so far for these other Lady Mustangs to get on the scorecard. That's right, and so the Lady Mustangs at the half 56 to seven. Let's look at the SS chiropractic second half adjustments for the Lady Mustangs just finish this game, getting some experience for other kids and uh, look ahead to next week. Yeah, Eric, I think that's the key. Like we said, you know, it'll be interesting. I'm assuming Coach Sibbles will play this starting group a little bit here in the second half. We'll see how much. And then you're going to have these other Lady Mustangs come in here. And this second group's done a good job. I mean, they've not put the points on the board that the starting five do. But overall, they've done a good job handling the ball. I like the passing between Bolin and Ward and uh, Shelburne and so forth. There's been some good passing. There's been some good passing inside the read. So you want to see some good execution out of that second group. Because to me, Eric, it just leads to that development somewhere later down the season where some of these Lady Mustangs can come off the bench and help the starters. And the other thing I look at, Eric, is, you know, Coach Sibbles is building a program here. He's building a foundation that this program is competitive in this region year in and year out. And the best way to do that is see good execution out of that second and third group that when they get an opportunity to play like they are this afternoon. So I think, Eric, the key for us to watch this afternoon in these last two quarters, see the starters get a few minutes in here, and then really see the second and third group come off the bench and see how well they execute and see the development in these younger players. That's right. And so the Lady Mustangs looking to do just that. That is your Estes Chiropractic second half adjustments. When you need that back adjustment, go see the back brothers. Kevin and Kelly Estes of Estes Chiropractic. Central Avenue in Paducah. The Lady Mustangs start on the defensive side of the basketball for this second half. As they are in control right now, 56 to 7. It will be St. Mary the possession. And the Lady Vikings with it. Clements straight away now to Kreider. On the far right side to Lorch. As Lorch to Kreider, her three. Got it. Eric, the Lady uh, Vikings get on the board first here in the third quarter. Indeed. That makes it 56 to 10 now. Lady Mustangs in control as it's poked away for a moment. Comes now in the post, but taken back by St. Mary. Lady Vikings on the return. Lady Mustangs up 56 to 10 as it goes right side to Lorch. Her three no good. Rebound controlled by St. Mary. And thrown back in near the backcourt, but St. Mary recovered. A left side three on the way. No good. Rebound comes down to McCracken County. Lily Hamilton had it poked away and taken away by St. Mary. A 17-footer's good. Nice shot there by Lorch. Lorch has got a nice shot. You know, she scored, what, I think four or five points so far tonight. Uh, for the Lady Vikings, she's got a nice shot. It will be now. Lady Mustangs up 56 to 12. As it comes towards the foul line, Brooklyn Preston now right side. A baseline drive coming from Skater Hauser. Knocked out front now to Case Beer. As Case Beer towards the left hand side as it goes to Ariana Bryson to the rim. Put it up no good, but Bryson will shoot two. So, Eric, really, this group that we've got on the court here. We did not see in the first half. Really, this is a brand new group here. Uh, really, players kind of 11 through 15 right now on the court for the Lady Mustangs starting this second half. First free throw from Bryson is no good. She'll have one more. And so the second free throw for Bryson on the way, and it's good. So Bryson makes one of two, 57 to 12. Lady Mustangs, 5.55 in the third. Lady Vikings of possession as it comes now out top to Clements. On the left, right hand side, I'm sorry, to Lorch. Back to Clements. Right side three. No good. Rebound comes back to St. Mary. Another chance. Lady Vikings, a jump shot partially blocked. Comes over though towards Clements. Her shot's no good. Out of bounds off McCracken. Actually, sorry, it's going to be off St. Mary to McCracken. Eric, I think it was a break for Lady Mustangs. I think I you called that right the first time. I think that was right in front of us. I think that was clearly off a of Lady Mustang there. So opportunity for them that uh, maybe they shouldn't have gotten. 
And so, the Lady Mustangs, it is Preston, or Bryson, I'm sorry, to the rim, puts it up and in. Eric has three points so far for Bryson in this early start of the third quarter. And so, it is going to be towards the right-hand side. And now straight away to Clements. A jump shot's partially blocked. It comes loose back to St. Mary. Another jump shot, no good. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. Put back up and in by Sims. Want to give a shout-out to Chase Buchanan listening in while traveling home from Nashville. Good to hear from you, Chase. Lady Mustangs, possession. Backdoor cut to Hauser. Layup no good. Rebound comes loose and taken by St. Mary. 59-14. Lady Mustangs on top. It is going to be the Lady Vikings possession. As Lorch actually nearly trampled with it. As Lorch now left side, a Kreider jump shot partially blocked. Rebound recovered by McCracken County. Over the right side. Bryson a three, no good. Rebound back to McCracken as Case Beer put it up, no good. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. Eric, that was a traveling call there against St. Mary's. The thing that interested me, that wasn't called by the referee. That was actually called by Case Beer. That's she, right. She picked that up and decided she was going to call that traveling call there uh, on one of the Lady Vikings. And indeed, the Lady Mustangs get the ball back. That is funny. It's 59 14. Lady Mustangs in control. Three and a half minutes in the third. Yes, it is towards the left hand side to Hauser. Hauser tried to get it to Case Beer, but it's poked away and stolen by St. Mary. As it comes now on the right-hand side to Vaughn. Swung towards the left-hand side to Lorch. Back to Vaughn. She'll take a right side three that's short. Rebound out of bounds off McCracken. It will stay with St. Mary. A new five coming in for McCracken County. Eric, this looks like the same five we saw Coach Sibbles put in in the first and second quarter after he took the starters out. As it is, St. Mary the possession is Vaughn a three. It's good. Eric, she used the uh, backboard there. A little That's bit. right. The backboard was the way she got that one in. That was a great uh, three-pointer. You don't see that too often. As a jump shot from a crack and no good. And then taken right back by St. Mary. There's a jumper by Lorch again off the glass is good. <laughs> Eric, that was the exact same shot off the glass there. Uh, two in a row. She's got that down. She must practice that. That was impressive to say the least. And so McCracken with it. As it is going to be a running, ooh, as tripped up on the play was Lazaria Bolin. She went down face first, but she's all right. Yeah, Eric, that was a very easy call. You don't see too many tripping calls in basketball, but... That woman was uh, pretty clear right there. It Even was. Even on the far end of the court, we could see that. Uh, the Lady Viking just uh, didn't intentionally trip up Bowling, but did a good job at it. And so it's underneath, a layup up and in perfectly by Janae Reed. And so the Lady Vikings, the possession. And then it's poked into the backcourt, and it will go out of bounds staying with St. Mary. That was a good, that was almost a steal by Megan Swinford. Swinford. She did a good job, Eric, trying to cut that pass off there. Just didn't get enough contact to be able to make it a turnover and drive it to the basket before she knocked it out of bounds. So the Lady Mustangs up 61-19 as it's thrown into the St. Mary bench. It will be a turnover back to McCracken County. Minute left in the third. Ashley Word into the front court to Swinford to Bolin. Bolin left side to Swinford, but poked away and stolen by St. Mary. As the Lady Vikings nearly had it turned back over, it's straight away. Kreider goes left side. A jumper on the way is perfect. Nice three by Maddie Alt. Eric, you got to give the Lady Vikings credit. They've done a nice job coming out in this third quarter. I mean, granted, they're playing against some second and third string for the Lady Mustangs, but overall they've done a nice job shooting in this third quarter. Lady Mustangs possession as Lazaria Bolin. Far left side to Word. Back to Bolin. 
As Bolin using a right hand dribble in front of her bench. Now a baseline drive floats it left side to Word. As Word takes it into the lane, puts it up no good. Rebound comes back to St. Mary. Lady Vikings possession with two seconds left. A shot at the buzzer is perfect. A nice <laughs> job by Matty Oltz. Eric, was, if I count right, that's three three-pointers off the glass. That is an impressive feat. <laughs> yeah, like we said when I think Lorch made the first one, you rarely see that three-point three-pointer made off the glass. She made two in a row. Alts come out here and made another one. Overall, Eric, I want to count. I think the Lady Vikings made three, four three-pointers right here in the third quarter. So they doubled their output, almost tripled their output from the first half. So you got to give them credit. They're playing against uh, the second and third string. But overall, particularly for Lorch and Alt, they're playing some pretty good basketball here in the second in the second half. That's right. As the Lady Mustangs up 61-25, boys game to follow this one here in just a little while. But overall, uh, this one in control with the running clock especially and lady vikings though not giving up no i like it like i said they're doing a nice job shooting in particular uh, their ball handling skills look a little better here in the second half for the lady vikings and so far eric you know this group right here the second group that coach civils has been putting in it's got uh, ward uh, swinford uh, shelburne looks like uh bolin and then the other player in there is Reed. I mean, that, this group here is playing pretty good basketball coming off the bench uh, for Coach Civil. So I like the development of this second group that we're seeing here this afternoon. Lady Mustangs on top, 61-24 as we continue this fourth quarter. It will be Swinford all the way to the rim. Layup's good. Oh, man, she took advantage, Eric. The Lady Vikings left the lane wide open for Megan Swinford to drive that in for an easy layup. So the senior gets her first basket of the day. Then Bullen gets a steal up the floor to Word. Word goes to Reed. Layup partially blocked. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. Lady Vikings on the return. As it is going to be Kreider. Now left side, a three coming from Alts off the side of the rim. No good. It will go to McCracken County. Eric, I think the problem for Alders, she actually made it. A classic three-point shot at the rim. They, they've got to get back to shooting those off the glass. That's right. <laughs> we have figured out they're quite good at the backboard three. As Bolin, a baseline drive, stops, goes to Swinford. Swinford past her opponent, gives it back to Bolin. Now to Swinford, back to Bolin. Baseline drive all the way to the rim, layup's good. Eric, I think one of the things is you've talked about this area, Bolin, and how good a basketball player she's going to be in the future. We continue to see her ability to drive to the basket. She's going to look good somewhere in the coming years as she develops to be a better and better player for Coach Sibbles. As it is top of the key, now left side to Alts as her baseline drive is cut off. Throws it off of the McCracken defender, but taken away by Shelburne. As Bolin, all the way to the rim, her layup's good. Eric, how many points that make for Bowling so far this afternoon? Uh, she will have 10 now. Breaks her in the double digits here this afternoon. Lady Vikings with it and throw it into the front row. It will go back to McCracken County. 67 to 24. Lady Mustangs on top. Six minutes left in the game. Substitution for St. Mary. Checking in is Braden Barnett. Also checking in now, number 12, Mason Clements. Lady Mustangs, the ball and the lead. 67-24 is Word. Try to get it to Shelburne. Now Shelburne chases it down to Bolin. As Bolin, top of the key goes to Shelburne. Now into the corner. Straight away to Swinford, to Bolin. As Shelburne, cross court to Word. She'll take a left side three and bury it. Eric gets that high arc and shot that Ashley Ward has. That's, she's two for two this afternoon shooting outside the arc. And that makes it 70 to 24. Lady Mustangs, as Word almost gets a steal. It goes on the left hand side to Alt. Alt, a contested three. Short rebound comes down to McCracken County. Lady Mustangs on the return. 
Word all the way to the rim. Floats one up. Got it. So Ashley Word exits now with 10. And a new five back in for McCracken County. Yeah, Eric, this uh, third group of five that we saw this afternoon has come up for the finish of this fourth quarter. One of the things, just to complement that second group, between Bowl and Award, both of them broke into double-digit scoring in just uh, the two sets of four minutes they got to play this afternoon. As it is taken away by Bryson up the floor, Casey Beers layups, good. Good to see Casey Beer get in. Want to give a shout out to the group from Pace, Florida for the Buchanan group and Tina, Granny, Uncle John, and, or excuse me, yeah, Uncle John and Lachey as they travel on St. Mary. Good to hear from you all in Florida. And so McCracken, the possession. It is going to be into the front court, Sarah Kate Hauser. Now top of the key to Case Beer. Hands it off to Bryson. Left side three from Hauser is perfect. Eric, this third group looks good so far. They've knocked down a quick five points since Coach Sibbles put him in the game at the four-minute mark. 77-24. Three and a half minutes left is a three from St. Mary. No good. Rebound to Case Beer. On the right-hand side, it goes to Bryson and taken away by St. Mary and taken right back almost by Bryson. It's out of bounds off of McCracken. It will go to St. Mary. Eric, this, uh, this third group's looking good. Indeed. Like what I see so far. Lady Vikings have it under three minutes left. 77-24 is a long two on the way, but no good. Rebound to Lily Hamilton, who hands it off to Hauser. Hauser takes a straightaway three and buries it. Eric, you know, one of the things I got to say about Hauser, I, I went down on the floor and watched the Lady Mustangs warm up. She was making a lot of three-pointers pregame. She has stroked it quite well for her sophomore season. And that makes it 80-24 to 24 now, Lady Mustangs. Right side three from St. Mary is good. Nice shot by Lorch. She's got 15 for St. Mary. As it goes over the head of Case Beer, it will be stolen by St. Mary. As the layup is no good, but it's going to be a foul on Brooklyn Preston for McCracken County. Eric Preston did the old, uh, you know, I like sometimes you want to say, hey, make sure they don't get the shot off. Uh, Preston made sure she didn't get that shot off. That was that was a foul. That was a, fly, a foul plus, sure was. There, I want to say. But she did a good job from preventing her from having that scoring opportunity. As the free throw is no good from the Lady Vikings. Minute 40 left in this game. Second free throw is good. So Clements makes one of two. And the Lady Mustangs on top 80 to 28. As it's top of the key to Preston. Hands it off to Hauser. Another open three. She got it. <laughs> Eric, she's graying them. She is a perfect three for three this second half for Sarah Kate Hauser. 83-28 is another three from St. Mary. No good. Case Beer gets it. Case Beer into the front court. Now goes cross court to Hauser. As Hauser couldn't quite get the pass. It's poked away by St. Mary, but out of bounds off the Lady Vikings. It will go to McCracken County. Eric, I, I think that was a good pass across court. They just had the right idea to try to get it to Hauser. She was wide open for another three-point opportunity. It goes on the right-hand side to Bryson. Now out top to Preston. And then Hauser as she goes right side. Is a running floater up no good, but it will be a blocking foul on St. Mary. As the final seconds are ticking down. It will be for McCracken County. At the foul line to shoot two, Ariana Bryson. Her first free throw is no good. One more. And she makes that one, makes one of two. And the final seconds tick off. 
As the Lady Mustangs win it tonight. Final score, 84 to 28. The Lady Mustangs move to 5 and 1 on the year. The Lady Vikings drop to 1 and 6 on the year. And Jimmy, much like we thought from that game, McCracken able to win going away. And uh, the Lady Mustangs able to get some experience. Yeah, Eric, you know, we, let's talk about you really had three different groups of Lady Mustangs play here. You had your starting lineup who played about eight minutes, four minutes in the first quarter, four minutes in the second quarter. And then you had that second group come off the bench with some players that we do see in some of the regular games. They played pretty much at least four minutes in each of the four quarters tonight. They did an excellent job. And then starting here in the second half, Coach <coughs> Sibbles put in his third group. It started the, the second uh, half in the first part of that third quarter and then continue to play some more in the fourth quarter. So, you know, you really take a look at it, Eric. He, Coach Sibbles had three different teams on the court as this game kind of played out overall. And you got to give a lot of credit. I mean, the front five did just what we expected. They put up 20 points per four minutes just with ease. But I like this play that we saw out of that second group. You know, we've talked some about Bowl and how good she's doing coming off the bench. She did a good job here again this afternoon. Uh, Reed did a good job in that second group as well. She's playing some good basketball. Uh, Ashley Ward came on. She did a good job. And then you saw this third group, and you know, didn't know what to expect out of that third group. We've really not seen any of those young lady Mustangs on the court so far uh, this season other than a little bit against CCA. But I've got to give them credit, Eric. That third group did an excellent job, particularly here in the fourth quarter. They did a nice job handling the ball. And one of the things is we learned – uh, from both that second, but in particular that third group, there's some shooters on the court. Yes. And so one of the things is, you know, we know from last year, one of the things that was an advantage for the Lady Mustangs was old Riley Benton coming off the bench and sinking three-pointers. And, you know, I see a couple, two or three players, particularly Ashley Ward and Hauser, that came off the bench here and made five three-pointers. I think between those two Lady Mustangs, they were five for five from the arc. So overall, Eric, you know, you see some, some youthful shooters developing up for the Lady Mustangs, not only just for this year, but for the years to come. So I'm impressed with what I saw offensively, particularly out of this third group. Indeed. And uh, for the Lady Mustangs, able to share the wealth and get some multiple scores with some really good numbers today for McCracken County. We're going to go over them right now. And to do that, we bring back Jimmy Garrett. So let's take a look at it. We'll take a look at the uh, – Lady Vikings first, um, Maddie Alt had a total of nine points. She was she made three three-pointers. She did a nice job shooting. Caroline Kreider, she had two. Uh, Audrey Sims, she had two. Uh, Mason Clemens, she had one. And then the lead scorer tonight for the Lady uh, Vikings was uh, Olivia Lort. She had a total of 15 points. Looking down at that scorecard, Eric, she had three, let's see, three total three-pointers as well. So. Overall, I was impressed with the Lady Vikings here in the second half. Granted, they were playing against the second and third team of the Lady Mustangs, but they did a nice job shooting the ball here in the second half. So to take a look at this list, Eric, uh, for the Lady Mustangs here, I think we, we might go clear in the break to go down this list. We've got so many scores today for the Lady Mustangs. We'll start out with the leading scorer, which was Claire Johnson. Claire had a total of 17 points. Keep in mind she made those 17 points in just eight minutes of play time here this afternoon. Going down to the rest of the scorecard, just in order, uh, Megan Swinford, she had four. Abby Casebeer had two. Uh, Jaden Skaggs had five. Uh, Reagan Hill had nine. Uh, Sarah Kate Hauser, she had nine. We just mentioned she made three three-pointers in a row just in the last three minutes of that fourth quarter. Ava Hughes had a good eight minutes as well. She had ten points. She's one of the only other Lady Mustangs in double digits. Ariana Bryson had four points. Uh, Jane uh, Reed, she had four points. Lazaria Bolin, she had ten. Another one of the Lady Mustangs in double digits. And then we come down to Ashley Ward. She was in double digits as well with ten points. And then Mickey Buchanan it only played eight minutes. But like I said, Eric, Mickey Buchanan only put up two points, but she had a lot of assists for the Mustangs in those eight minutes that she played in the first and second quarter. That's right. And overall, really good numbers all around for McCracken County as they now move to 5-1 and one on this young year. And uh, now go ahead and look towards next week in the Queen of the Commonwealth. They will play Taylor County as Coach Scott Civil starts making his way up here. Uh, overall, it is uh, a tough tournament that is year in and year out, the best girls' Christmas tournament uh, every year. This year looks to be no different. It was 
Now the third year in a row, McCracken County will be there. Just unbelievable competition uh, for that tournament that the Lady Mustangs will be facing, starting with Taylor County on Tuesday. That will be at 3 p.m. Central Time right here on 99.5. The fan is the head coach of the McCracken County Lady Mustangs. Coach Scott Sibbles joining us now. Coach, overall, good win for your program. What's about you, what you expected for today? Got to play the first, second, and third strings and got good results from each. Yes, uh, district win is always important. Um, I thought we played very well, honestly, first half uh, with, our, with our main group and uh, got some steals and the turnovers and then some layups and kids got some points and everybody's happy everyone played and everyone played well i was uh i was like dang skater after the game she, she went off on us here with back to back to back threes that's big time for her so uh we've got some some big games coming up and we're and we're pumped up about going to louisville next week it's kind of like a pre to what we'll may hopefully see in march in, in rep arena so uh, we got some, some tough competition in front of us. So uh, uh, we'll be ready to have some fun, go up, go up and try and win some ball games. And it's several that I wanted to bring up. Skater was the first one. You've mentioned that. She just in the fuego that fourth quarter. Ashley Word had some nice shot. It's just so many that uh, you can talk about, almost everyone getting in the scores column. Just wonderful offensive output. You know, Ashley is someone that may have to come in some this year and play a, a vital role in some games because she can handle the ball. She's a really good shooter. Um, I think Skater is somebody that eventually, before she leaves our program, will be a vital, also important piece to us because she shoots the ball very well. So, um, you know, right now our young kids are, are, are getting better. They're playing very well on the JV and the freshman end right now. So, uh, there may be some games where we're in major foul trouble where we have to have some of those kids come in and give us a, give us a big lift. So uh, uh, I was happy for our young kids being able to play. Um, you know, they came in a little bit flat there at the beginning of the third. So at the end of the third quarter, we had a, had a little bit of a talk with our, you know, those, those 10 and said, hey, man, they got to come in and compete a little bit better. And they did a very good job in that fourth quarter came out and got some steals and to some scores and made some shots. So um, being able to, to, you know, every day, uh, you know, even during warm-ups today, I, I, I emphasize that every day is a new day. And today was a new day, a new game. So we have to continue our culture of how we want to play and compete every game. And so um, very proud of our girls and, you know, coming, you know, this would have been a game where we could have been very, very flat, and we weren't, you know, we weren't flat today. So uh, I was glad that our kids came out and competed at a high level. And now you turn your attention to Taylor County. You and I chatting before the game. Tell me a little bit about what you expect from Taylor County. You know, Taylor County is probably one of the top two or three teams in their region, and their best player uh, tore her ACL back in the early summer and she'll be back I think not maybe not this tournament but maybe after January and they will be a you know hard to handle in their region behind Bethlehem so uh, Bethlehem is a team that probably is picked to win their region um, but I think if if and that was you know before the transfer uh, of Macy it, uh, they were picked to win their region and so but still They'll be, in, they'll be in the mix with them in the top two uh, in their region. So we know that this tournament is a prestigious tournament. The best teams in Kentucky are there. So we've got to come ready to play in the first game and compete. They're scrappy, man. Taylor County is going to be a very well-coached, scrappy basketball team. And so we play the very first game of the tournament uh, next Tuesday at 4 o'clock. So we'll have to be able to be ready to play. And so uh, we look forward to the, you know, the, the game and the competition. Um, win or lose, our next game will be a very, very tough game with two ranked teams. So we're going to play a ranked team no matter how you look at it, game number two uh, on Wednesday. So, um, but we're excited. We, we, we're playing for March. I'm going to keep using that phrase a lot. We're playing for March. And that's what our goal is, is that, we look up, and before 
here in the next two or three weeks. We're, we're going to be halfway through with our season already. It's just flying by too fast. So it's very, very vital that we come out ready to play uh, next week. That's right. And that's what the Lady Mustangs working on every single game as you get ready for the Queen of the Commonwealth. Then you go to Florida after Christmas. Talk about what you are expecting uh, after Christmas uh, before we get back into January. Well, uh, you know, I've already been looking at some film already. Uh, you know, Joseph Simmons, the former Marshall County coach, is uh, the coach at Green Hills. And so we've been watching some film on them. Um, and very we'll, good coach. We'll, we'll play them last game of the tournament, and they'll be very, very, very good. I've got some film, and I've watched Rogers Heritage out of, uh, out of Rogers, Arkansas. They're very competitive as well. Uh, Ravenwood is out of Brentwood. They will be a very tough matchup for us. Um, I haven't watched film on them yet, but I would probably say they're going to be a, you know, a good test for us. So um, we'll, we'll leave for Florida on the 26th, and we'll get down there and get the kids settled, and then we'll play the 27th, 8th, and 9th, and come home on the 30th. So, um, you know, we're looking to, you know, compete well in to Louisville and then come back and spend some days with our families for Christmas break, and then we will uh, – head to Florida on a great trip that we're looking forward to for our seniors that have worked so hard the last four years. We want to give them a nice trip uh, before they graduate and get out of here. So, um, but again, you know, we're super excited about the future of the program. You know, we're um, just building building blocks, man. We're just trying to build some, some, some main blocks for our future. And, you know, we love winning. We just don't like to lose. And That's so, right. So, you know, we're just trying to build a march and hopefully we can continue what we're doing and, um, and keep getting better. So being 2-0 and in district play, Eric, is important for us. I mean, uh, we, we feel like that we just can't look, look over anybody because I've seen way too many upsets in, in basketball games before. And I, I just like how our kids came out and played with a lot of intensity and, 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 and competed very hard. And you have Paducah Tillman coming up in January and in February. Uh, the, the other district opponent you haven't faced yet. That's the last piece of the second district puzzle you're still to face. What do you know about the Blue Tornado? Uh, just they're always athletic, as right. always, and they muck it up a little bit on you, and they try to you know play kind of kind of wild and crazy. Um, but they'll be very competitive and, and ready to play against us. It's, it's a rival game, and, and you have to be ready to play that type of atmosphere and that type of game. So. Um, we have Owensboro Catholic, in, you know, in there. We have Callaway County in there. Yep. Uh, so uh, we're going to be able to see Callaway, uh, and they're probably one of the top, you know, two or two, three or four teams in our region. So we got to be ready to play. And so uh, it's very crucial that we uh, come back. And and we also, January 4th, we got to go to Massac County. It's always a tough place to go play over Massac. So um, we got some tough games here in the early part of January that we're looking at and uh, just kind of keep getting better. Coach, appreciate it as always, my friend. Congratulations on the win, and we will talk to you Tuesday in Louisville. Yes, sir. Go Mustangs. All right. That is the head coach of the Lady Mustangs, Coach Scott Simmels. When we come back, we'll break down the boys' matchup, McCracken County and St. Mary coming up, 99.5 The Fam. We understand that life happens, and sometimes you need a little financial boost. That's why at C-Plant Federal Credit Union, we offer low-rate loans tailored to your needs. Whether it's a car loan, a personal loan, or anything in between, we've got you covered. Learn more at cplant.com or visit any of C-Plant Federal Credit Union's nine local branches. Member NCUA, equal housing lender. There is a lot of confusion surrounding the Employee Retention Tax Credits, or the ERTC. Many have said that the program has been stopped or shut down, but that is just not true. CS Business Consulting has personally consulted and advised with the IRS that they are still accepting applications and time is running out. CS Business Consulting in Paducah, Kentucky has filed for over $135 million in credits for their customers. Contact us today to find out if you are eligible and qualified to file for these credits. Learn more at CSBI. Taking care of your family isn't always easy, so we make sure getting care when you need it is. We'll 
With Baptist Health Urgent and Virtual Care, we bring you more options and greater convenience too. With video visits available 24-7 and online check-in through MyChart for in-person visits. To check in online or to set up a video visit, go to baptisthealth.com slash care anywhere. Burrito After Dark is Paducah's new favorite Tex-Mex spot. Delicious burritos, trashy nachos, maxed out nachos, shrimp tacos with fresh cooked shrimp, and it's all customizable. Wrap up all that great food with some live entertainment, and you've got the perfect girls night or date night. Burrito After Dark isn't just for adults. Families are always welcome. They're the home of daily fresh made salsa and guac. And if that wasn't enough, book your next event at their 80 capacity space. Burrito After Dark in the old Fat Moe's downtown Paducah. At CFSB, we're your ultimate business partner. Our business development team is ready to help you with personal banking that suits your unique goals, along with top-notch business services to streamline your operations. Need capital to fuel your business dreams? Our business lending solutions have gotten you covered. From small startups to established enterprises, we're here to support your growth every step of the way. Simplify your business journey today. Visit any of our eight banking centers or explore our website at yourlifeyourbank.com to discover the convenience of a true one-stop shop. Your success is our business. Together, let's make it happen. CFSB, member FDI. I see equal housing lender. Craig Culver on Culver's Salted Caramel Concrete Mixers. Summer just isn't complete without this treat. We take our frozen custard and add salted caramel. Then pick your favorite mix in. Cookie dough, brownie pieces, or how about Reese's peanut butter cup? We spin it by hand. I love seeing that caramel swirl through the custard. There it is. Come on in for the Culver's Salted Caramel Concrete Mixer. Welcome to Delicious. Stop in at Culver's on Highway 60 in Paducah. Discover the difference that comes from a financial partner committed to building better tomorrows. I'm Darren Rudolph with Bear Private Wealth Management in Paducah. As a provider of trusted financial services in Paducah, Baird is committed to making the future brighter for you and for our community. That's why we support local organizations like United Way and West Kentucky Fellowship of Christian Athletes because we care about Paducah. Discover the Baird difference. Visit paducah.bairdwealth.com. If you live with pain, you have good days and bad days. You deserve a pain-free life. And the first step is talking with your doctor about pain management with Dr. Ferdinand Salvacion at the Orthopedic Institute of Western Kentucky Pain Center. Dr. Salvacion specializes in pain management and will work with you to get you back to those good days. Talk to your primary care provider about pain management with Dr. Salvacion at the Orthopedic Institute of Western Kentucky. Has your team star gone cold from outside? Is the opposing team hot from everywhere? At MrCool.com today, you'll find heating and cooling solutions your home needs, like with our flagship DIY mini split heat pumps. Perfect for your garage, office, or with our five zone system, your whole home. It's really up to you. You're the play caller at your house, right? Right? Visit MrCool.com today for your HVAC needs and beat discomfort with the full core press from an innovative Mr. Cool HVAC system. We understand that life happens, and sometimes you need a little financial boost. That's why at C-Plant Federal Credit Union, we offer low-rate loans tailored to your needs. Whether it's a car loan, a personal loan, or anything in between, we've got you covered. Learn more at cplant.com or visit any of C-Plant Federal Credit Union's nine local branches. Member NCUA, equal housing lender. Back here at beautiful Strawberry Hills Pharmacy Arena, McCracken County High School, the Mustangs and St. Mary getting set to square off. Jimmy, uh, overall, give me your overview and analysis on this one in the next 2.15. All right, Eric, we'll make it quick here, but I think the key is when I looked over the St. Mary's team, I mean, not a bad team at all overall, you look at them, but I think the thing that really, really jumped out at me is they've got two scores. they got Owen Michael and Luke Sims, and between these two guys, they're averaging 23 points for one of them and 22 for the other. So you've got two scores on the on the floor here tonight for St. Mary's that between the two of them, they're putting in 45 points a game. So, you know, overall it looks like they're averaging about 71 points per game as a team, but these two guys are putting in 60, nearly 
of their offense. And so, Eric, that's the first thing I've got on the keys to success tonight to look at is really the defense against Michael and Sims. I think the key is here is for the Mustangs to be able to put plenty of pressure against these two shooters and keep them off the scoring scoreboard throughout the night. And I think if you can do that, I think if you can contain these two leading scores for the uh, Vikings, I think this is an easy victory for the Mustangs. But controlling these two is going to be a big task when you think about you've got two scorers on the same team that are at 22 and 23 points apiece. So that's the first thing. I think the second thing, Eric, I want to quickly talk about is improving on the defensive boards. You and I talked about it last night on the way home. One of the things is it was a little bit of a surprise is the Marshals were able to out-rebound the Mustangs down on the offensive end. They really did a good job with really an undersized group playing in the paint. And overall, they really took advantage of Jackson Clope and Grayson Parrish and out-rebounded them. So tonight, I would like to see that get back to the normal where Jackson Clope is dominating. And then I think the last thing is better play out of the guards. You and I witnessed uh, last night that Coach Roberts was getting on his guards, particularly uh, Jay Martin and Connor Miller, about moving around, making sure there was movement, moving the ball around, finding that open shooter. And so tonight, Eric, I think we've got to see a big improvement against this Viking team in order to walk out of here with a victory tonight. That's right. That is what the Mustangs looking to do is your Brandon Clifton All-State Insurance for success. You're always in good hands with McCracken County All-State agent Brandon Clifton in Paducah. Aiden to front will bring us our national, not national anthem, our starting lineups for this second game here today as we are set for McCracken County and St. Mary. And so the starting lineups for St. Mary and McCracken County. As I was looking over the starting lineup, Brett Haas introduced. He's grown a bit since I last saw him. He's now up to six foot two and uh, a natural athlete. Baseball his strongest, basketball behind that, soccer in the mix as well. And so he is one of the stars for this St. Mary Ball Club, the Mustangs as well. A lot of handshakes between these two teams as they know each other quite well we're set for action here today yeah eric i think we'll see a much more competitive game here this afternoon between the boys than we did the girls so be interesting to see how these two big scores uh, play out tonight for or this afternoon for st mary's and so it goes into the air and it's going to be controlled by st mary's it went out of bounds the vikings will get the possession And so, it is St. Mary possession. It is, it goes on the right-hand side of the floor to Hahn. It will be now picking up his dribble, going straight away, nearly poked away. Coming away with it was Michael, swung now into the corner. As with it for St. Mary was Hahn, but it's poked away and stolen by Miller. As Connor tried to get it underneath, but it's kicked. It's going to stay with McCracken County. Yeah, Connor had the right idea there. Dylan Jackson was cutting down the other side of the paint, Eric. He was wide open there. It was an opportunity for an easy basket here at the beginning of the game for the Mustangs. And so it will be St. Mary on the defensive side. McCracken County will inbound it as it comes in now to Jackson. Swung now to Miller. Back to Jackson, now to Martin. 
as Martin goes into the corner to Clope, Jackson, Miller, Martin. Thought about a spot up three. Goes now short corner to Parrish. His short jumper. It's no good. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. Vikings on the return for St. Mary. It is Sims. As Sims crosses it over on the left-hand side. Now gets a Euro step in. <laughs> blocked by Clope. Mercy. <laughs> as that comes back to Jay Martin. Martin. Right side to Jackson. Spot up three. No good. Air ball. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. Eric, that's unusual for Dylan Jackson. He was shooting the ball good last night against Marshall County. And now it is a straightaway limb. Sims, excuse me, as it nearly poked away. Comes back to Durbin. Back to Sims. Off of a high screen. Sims met by a double team. Over to Durbin. As Durbin hands it off now to Haas. Haas on the low block, turns, surrounded, turns again, and maybe travel, put it up no good. Rebound comes down to Clope. As Clope tried to hand it off to Miller, it's knocked away. It's going to be out of bounds off St. Mary to McCracken County. Eric, I like the play by Jackson Clope. He's had a tendency to try to drive through defenders there when he gets a head of steam headed for the basket, but there he didn't. He tried to find Connor Miller wide open. It will be McCracken possession. Miller thought about a spot up three, goes to Jackson. Back to Miller. Swung left side to Martin. As Martin. Straight away to Miller. To Martin. Now to Parrish. Cross court to Miller. He'll take a spot up right side three and bury it. That was a nice pass by Grayson Parrish. He passed that all the way across the paint to find Connor Miller wide open there out there on the arc on the left-hand side of the court. Mustangs lead at 3 nothing. Six minutes here in this first quarter. It will be Aiden Hahn. Goes now on the far left side to Durbin. Durbin hands it off to Haas. Backdoor cut underneath. It's off McCracken County. It'll stay with St. Mary. Eric, I like the start so far by the Mustangs down here on offensive end. I mean, you can say, hey, we only put three points on the board, but we've done a good job passing the ball around so far on offensive end. We want to see that tonight. Vikings possession as into the corner. A three coming from Owen Michael, no good. Rebound comes down to Connor Miller. As Miller goes left side to Jay Martin. Spot up three, got it. Eric, we saw Jay do that last night, so he's continuing his offensive contribution that we saw last night against Marshall County again tonight. Six nothing, Mustangs on top, 525 in the first. On the wing, it goes to Durbin. Now straight away to Sims. As Sims between two goes left side to Hahn. His three short. Rebound comes down to Miller. Connor Miller on the return. On the left side to Jackson to Miller. As he's going to take a straightaway three, it's no good. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. Vikings on the return. As it goes on the right hand side to Sims. Now into the corner, Durbin. As Durbin. And to back off is a jumper off the glass. No good. Rebound comes down to McCracken County. Is Jay Martin. Straight away to Parrish. To Martin. Swung right side. Now Martin gets it back. He thought about a spot up three, but he's going to wait just a little bit. It will go into the corner to Miller to Clope. Cross court to Jackson. Spot up left side three is perfect. Oh, Eric, the Mustangs are off to a great start outside of the arc. I mean, three of the five starters so far have hit three-pointers just in this first three minutes of this first quarter. So the Mustangs now on top right now, 9-0. It will be St. Mary possession. As it is top of the key, almost taken away. It is going to be... A shot at the rim by Michael that was blocked, recovered, blocked again. Mustangs have it. Jay Martin into the front court. It goes right side into the corner. Miller, nice pass. Clope, reverse layups, good. Oh, Eric, that was a nice feed from Jackson over the corner into Jackson. Clope, this is an excellent play and quick passes there by the Mustangs on the offensive end. So the Mustangs now on top, 11-0. Parrish almost getting a steal, fighting for it into the front court. And it is going to be a jump ball going to McCracken County. Eric, that was a hustle play by Grayson Parrish. You know, you talk about him playing soccer. That was a nice play there. You could see the hustle from Grayson Parrish uh, crossing over here to the basketball court. Great effort by Grayson. We love to see that, see him play some good defense for the Mustangs tonight. McCracken County will inbound it. Sideline out of bounds. It's 11-0. The Mustangs on top, 3.30 in the first. As Miller swings it left side. Now Miller, right side to Fulcher, to Miller. 
Thought about the three. Goes to Fulcher on the wing. Back to Miller. Left side to Jackson. In the corner to Parrish. Four out, one in right now for McCracken County. As it goes now into the corner to Jace Dawson. Swung right side to Miller. To Jackson. His three on the way is perfect. Well, the Mustangs remain perfect. There gets four for four. And Coach Chase Denson wants a timeout. That's the danger about playing this group in zone for McCracken County. They spread it around the perimeter with a four out, one in. Defense gets stretched. You end up eventually with the solid passing, which is what Coach Roberts was begging for last night. You find those open shots eventually. Yeah, Eric, let's talk about that for a moment. You know, we talked about in the pregame that Coach Roberts was really on these guards about their passing last night against the Marshals. And here tonight, you've seen the opposite. So you know that Coach Roberts and his staff coached these guys up about kind of that mistake last night against Marshall County, particularly in the second quarter. And tonight, man, they really look crisp outside the arc, passing the ball around. I like the quickness of it. I like the big guys getting involved in that passing as well. That pass play right there that led to that three-pointer started over there in the corner with Grayson Parrish. He got the ball out there high to Connor Miller. He gets it over to Dylan Jackson. So, you know, one of the things is, Eric, that we're seeing here tonight is the potential of these guards if the shooting's hot and you look at all three guards so far tonight, they've made every three-pointer. you got Caden Fulcher on the court there a little bit here so far in the first quarter as well. He's another guy who can shoot three-pointers. So you got four out of the six guys on the floor so far in this first quarter that are really good shooters outside the arc. That's a big threat. I think one other thing, Eric, I want to mention for the fans at home is Jace Dawson's playing here in the first quarter. I think, Eric, this is the earliest we've seen him come in the game so far this year for the Mustangs. And so the Mustangs on top, 14 to nothing. As it is St. Mary, the possession all the way to the rim as Luke Sims put it up no good. Rebound comes down to McCracken County as Parrish clears it to Miller. So Miller brings it up for the Mustangs. Left side to Fulcher, now into Dawson. Lost it for a moment, but kicked it right to Jackson. Led straight away to Fulcher, now to Dawson. He turns, short jump shot, got it. Eric, that's nice. I just mentioned Jace Dawson being in the game. He did a nice job with about a five-foot jump shot there in the paint. 16 to nothing. Mustangs on top, 220 in the first. It is St. Mary the possession. As it is going to be into the lane, it's going to be a hold on McCracken County's Connor Miller. And it will be substitutions. Carter Halls, Jackson Cloak. In for McCracken County. And so the Lady Mustangs, winners earlier, the Mustangs off to a good start here. 16 to nothing. A right side three coming from Sims. No good. Rebound comes down to Clope. As it is Clope all the way to the rim himself. Puts it up and in. Eric, we've seen him do that all season long. And that's, I love to see that control out of Jackson Clope that we saw on that fast break right there. 18 to nothing. Mustangs on top. As it goes now into the lane, ends it back out as is almost lost by St. Mary. A three coming from Sims is perfect. Eric, that's the first points. There's a minute, 47 seconds left in this first quarter. That's the first scoring opportunity so far for the Vikings. Great defense from the Mustangs. 18-3, mm -hmm. to three, the Mustangs on top. As Jackson to Halls to Fulcher. Now to Clope, back in the corner to Halls. He'll take a spot up three. It rims out. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. Did everything but fall. And so it will be the Vikings' possession, as it is going to be Owen Michael. As he goes all the way to the rim, puts it up and in, and he's fouled. Eric, so, so far, uh, finally, uh, Michael and Luke Sims finally get cranking here. Like I said, the Mustangs held them off for six total minutes here in this first quarter, but they picked up a quick five points here since they came out of that timeout. So. Chase Denson made some uh, adjustments there to his offense to finally get him on the board here before this quarter's over. This Viking team is not a bad ball club as the free throw is good. Coach Chase Denson, a wonderful coach, his assistants as well. Mustangs up 18 to 6 with a minute left in the first. Left side, it goes to Dawson. Swung right side, it goes in the corner to Halls. As Halls to Fulcher, to Miller. Now to Dawson. 
He'll take a left side three, no good. Rebound to Clope, puts it up and in. And then he meets the he meets the ground. Yeah, Eric, but that's the effort. You know, we didn't get that effort out of Jackson Clope last night. And, you know, certainly it wasn't all his fault. Marshall played good. But that's the kind of rebounding we've seen the rest of the year out of Jackson Clope. And he'll continue on starting this afternoon here in this game against the against the Vikings. 20 to 6. Mustangs on top. 30 seconds left in this opening quarter. Vikings in possession. So it goes on the right-hand side to Jackson Willett. Back now to Sims. Swung left side to Herdlicka. Herdlicka on the right-hand side to Willett. Down to 10 seconds. It is going to be a backdoor cut. It's, it actually went out of bounds. Intended for Sims trying to save it was Jackson Willett. The Mustangs will have it with 3.8 going full length of the floor. And so it will be Miller. He brings it, and a three at the buzzer is perfect. A nice job by Connor Miller to put an exclamation point on that first half, five, or first quarter, five three-pointers in that first quarter for the Mustangs. Yeah, Eric, and let's just talk about the shooting percentage, really, for the Mustangs, both two-pointers and three-pointers. But just to take a quick look at those three-pointers, they're five for seven. I mean, Jace Dawson missed one there, and Carter Hall's late here in the first quarter. But up to that point, the Mustangs were four for four, and then Connor Miller comes down and makes that fifth one. So, so far, you take a look at it, and that's one of the areas statistically when you look at the Mustangs, been a little bit of a struggle so far this season, shooting out so the, side the arc. So, to me, Eric, that's got to be something that Coach Roberts is extremely happy with, that the Mustangs are shooting five for seven outside the arc so far tonight. I think the other thing, Eric, that I've liked so far, Jackson Clope looks a lot better than he did last night against the Marshals. I like the fact that he brought that rebound just a moment ago, drove with the length of the court, didn't try to really steamroll through the defenders, but pulled up at the right moment and took it off the glass for an easy basket there. So overall, Eric, I, I like what I see out of the starting five tonight versus what we saw last night over at Marshall County. I also like the fact that Jace Dawson's come in here playing some defense. He forced that last turnover there in the last 10 seconds by the Vikings, and as well as he, he made a nice jumper inside the paint there uh, just a few moments ago as well. So overall, Eric, I like the play of the front five. I like what I saw from Jace Dawson coming off the bench so far. And so the Mustangs... Up to a quick start, 23-6. to six. A great start overall in this first quarter by McCracken County. It will be St. Mary the possession in Luke Sims. As he goes off of the screen, Sims into the lane. Floats one off the glass, gets it to go. Nice start for St. Mary in this second quarter. 23-8. to eight. Mustangs on top as Cope tripped up in the lane. He's, he's meeting the ground a lot so far this one. As Jay Martin goes on the right side to Carter Halls, back to Martin. Swung to Miller, back to Martin. Now to Dawson. Two Halls to Martin. Patience here in this half court set from the Mustangs. To Dawson, to Miller, to Martin. He thought about the three to Halls. His three is on the way. It rims out. Great extra pass there by Jay Martin. Just couldn't get it to go for Halls. It will be Owen Michael. As Michael gives it back out to Luke Sims, swung on the left side. A three coming from Hahn is no good. Rebound comes down to Miller. Miller into the front court, crosses it over, gives it up to Jay Martin. He'll spot up a three. It rims out. Rebound comes out to St. Mary. On the return of Sims, he lost it for a moment. Turns, gives it back. A three coming. Nope, Willett gives it up. Now a three coming on the right-hand side from Herdlick, and no good. Rebound comes down to Dawson. As Jace Dawson. Into the front court, now to Miller. Swung to Martin. 23 to 8, six and a half minutes in the second quarter. Miller, Martin, directing traffic out front against his 2-3 zone. There's some confusion out front for the Mustangs. Now they have it resolved a bit. And now swing it to Halls. Halls back to Martin. Thought about a pop-up, and it goes to Miller. He also thought about a shot, goes back to Martin. Mustangs not passing it as much right now. Against his 2-3 zone, now go to Halls. He's going to take a spot-up jumper, no good. Rebound is Miller, fights for it, somehow manages to get it without falling. 
Goes left side to Halls. As Halls goes to Martin. He'll take a spot up three and bury it. Eric, J, J. Martin continues. You know, we talked about his shooting last night. He continues here in this first half against the Vikings. I like to see Jay step up there and get some scoring out of him as another scorer on this Mustang offense. As Jay had a hand in his face, was able to get that to go. Just a freshman for the Mustangs. The sky is quite bright for the future of Jay Martin. So Parrish comes back in, also Dylan Jackson as well. And the Mustangs up 26 to eight, five and a half minutes in this second quarter. St. Mary the possession. Is it straight away to Luke Sims? As Sims on the right hand side, lost it off his foot. It goes to McCracken County. Eric, I think that was just nice defense by Jay Martin. I mean, granted, he, he lost it off his foot there, but Jay Martin was staying in front of him, not allowing him to drive the ball to the basket. So it was a good defense by Jay Martin that caused that turnover. And so it will be Jay Martin, the possession. As Martin goes on the left-hand side, he gets it back. Now swung left side to Jackson. Spot up three. No good. Rebound comes along to St. Mary. On the return come the Vikings. As it is going to go into the backcourt, Klobe's going to chase it down. Watch out. There's the dunk <laughs> from Klobe. Eric, we've not seen one of those in a couple games, but Jackson, he picked up that uh, loose ball there and drove it the length for a nice, nice slam dunk down the paint. And then nearly taken away. It is going to be a foul on McCracken County. That foul, Eric, was on uh, Dylan Jackson. We don't want to see him get in foul trouble. One of the things that note, he got in foul trouble last night against the Marshals and ended up picking up his first one here so far uh, midway through this quarter. On the left wing, it is Hahn. Out top to Willits. And now a three coming from Sims. No good. A rebound comes out of McCracken County. 28-8. to eight. Mustangs on top. Four and a half minutes, second quarter. Miller. Nice pass to Klope, layup's good. Timeout, Chase Denson. He is not like what he has seen the last few series. No, Eric, one of the things is Chase can be upset about his defense. I mean, granted, you know, the Mustangs right now are really cutting through it, but the credit really needs to go to the Mustangs. I think one of the things is, Eric, you know, in these last 24 hours we've talked about, I think Coach Roberts really had some good, dis good discussions with his starting five on the offensive end of the court. And we've just seen really deliberate passing throughout each one of the offensive opportunities the Mustangs have had so far in this first half. That was a great pass inside to Jackson Pope for an easy basket overall. And then we've seen really crisp passing outside the arc, trying to get it around to a guard as quick as they could to get an open three-pointer. Been successful shooting out there. A little bit colder here in the second quarter than we saw in the first quarter. But overall, Eric, you've got to say this is 100% improvement from the Mustangs on the offensive end than what we saw last night at Marshall County. That's right, and uh, a great bounce back so far. As you like to you see if you are Coach Dustin Roberts and staff. You always wonder, after disappointing losses, how your team will respond in games that are shortly thereafter, and the Mustangs doing quite well with that. Yeah, and you know, one of the things is, Eric, I think is an advantage here today. I mean, when you do lose a game like you lost at Marshall County, you know, there is a little bit of loss of momentum, a little disappointment. It's great to get to come back 24 hours later, a little less than 24 hours later, and get an opportunity to redeem yourself, and that's what the Mustangs are doing here on Saturday afternoon. Want to give a shout-out? So I'll do that in just a moment. Luke Sims on the right-hand side goes now straight away, picks up his dribble, gives it off now to Owen Michael. His three's no good. Rebound comes down to Connor Miller. As Miller on the return for the Mustangs, a couple of crossover dribbles. And sets up shop in the half court. Now receives a trap. He goes on the right-hand side to Jackson. And it's a timeout for Coach Dustin Roberts, a 30-second timeout to talk that over for a moment. Want to give a shout-out to the Brownings as uh, they are listening in. Also, uh, the Normans as well. Want to give a shout-out to Max, Kubis, and Lubis, as they're affectionately known, saying hello and go Mustangs. Good to hear from you all this weekend on the Sailor Connection text hotline. Yeah, Eric, you know, one of the things is coming out of this right here. I think one of the things is that Coach Roberts saw there is the Vikings cranked up their defense. Chase Denson got on them a little bit at that last time out that he called, wanted his guys to be a little more aggressive from a defensive end. They were able really to uh, box Connor Miller in there at the corner, really at the half-court line, 
Coach Roberts didn't like it, so he called that timeout to make a little adjustment here in the offense based on the change that Chase Dittinson did with his team defensively. It will be the Mustangs with the possession up 30 to eight. Download a club, pump fakes, puts it in. That was another nice interior pass there from Grayson Parrish over to Jackson Cloak for Jackson to have an easy shot right at the glass. 32 to eight, three and a half minutes in the second quarter. St. Mary the ball as it is gonna be a jumper from Haas. It's no good, rebound, actually it was not Haas, I'm sorry, it was Hahn. Rebound comes down to Fulcher. Right side to Martin. Spot up three. No good. Rebound. Klopp almost got it. Coming in out of nowhere. It comes back to Brett Haas. Haas all the way to the board. Puts it up. No good. And they call an offensive foul there. That will go against Haas. Yeah, Eric, I think Haas, he really should have pulled up there about six or eight feet from the basket and maybe took a quick jumper there or found a, an out pass there to somebody else that was open. But he decided... Kind of like Jackson does sometimes. He had a head of steam. He wanted to keep the drive going alive, and I think he flattened Dylan Jackson on the way to the rim. Not only has Haas grown, he has bulked up. As uh, It goes now on the left-hand side to Fulcher, knocked away by Sims. It will beat Mustangs ball underneath their own basket, leading 32-8. to eight. Alongside Jimmy Garrett, I'm Eric Chumbler. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's Klopp off the glass, too strong. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. Three minutes left in the second quarter. It's a baseline drive off the glass, put up and in by Owen Michael. Eric, that's probably the nicest play we've seen by Owen Michael. We know he's averaging 23 points a game, but that was a nice drive there. Jay Martin goes off of a screen, and his pass is kicked. It will stay with McCracken County. Jace Dawson back in for the Mustangs. And McCracken possession. 32 to 10. Mustangs on top, 240 second quarter. Jay Martin turns against the double team. Goes now to Dawson. Back out to Martin. Swung right side to Fulcher. And it's poked away and stolen. On the return comes St. Mary. Is an up and under layup no good. Tipped up no good. And it's going to be a foul, I believe, on Jay Martin. Yeah, Eric, Jay was a little bit over the back there. Ended up trying to block that shot and really got way too much of the shooter there for the Vikings not to get a foul call there. But just a, it was a good play. It was a good drive right there. One of the things is the Vikings were able to do is pick up that offensive rebound and get that second chance here at the free throw line. Free throw from Aiden Hahn is good. He will have one more as Hahn is second free throw on the way. It's no good. Rebound is fought for. Out of bounds off St. Mary. It will go to McCracken County. Yeah, that was off of Hawes. Hawes actually got inside of Martin there. They're actually going to overturn it and give it to McCracken or to St. Mary. And so that will go back to the Vikings. And so moving screen that's going to not really matter. It will be a turnover back to McCracken County. Checking in for St. Mary in just a moment is going to be David Deneve. His first action for the Knights. And now the Mustangs, the possession of 32 to 11, 220 second quarter. Jay Martin on the left hand side. As he goes to Fulcher, to Dawson, backdoor cut to Parrish, layup no good. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. Vikings on the return, comes on the left-hand side. Three from Hahn is short. Rebound comes down to Parrish. Clears it to Martin. Jay Martin on the far side to Fulcher. It's Fulcher between two. It's poked away, but goes right to Martin. As Martin goes back to Fulcher. Swung left side to Jackson. His open three he is no good. Rebound is to St. Mary. It's to Durbin, to Hahn. He'll take another three and bury it. Hahn has taken a few, got his first to go. 32 to 14, the Mustangs on top. A minute 20 in this second quarter. As Fulcher, his open three is no good. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. Mustangs a little bit cold here in the last few minutes. St. Mary, the possession. As it's going to be a touch foul, I believe, on Jace Dawson. 
And so that is on Dawson. You know, one of the things, Eric, and just for the fans at home, Jace Dawson's been playing a good bit. He played some, as I mentioned, that Marshall County game. He's been playing here a good bit in the first half for the Mustangs. He's been in there for Jackson Clope. And one of the things, Eric, I look down at, sis, is it will be St. Mary the possession. Comes on the left-hand side to Sims. As Sims is cut off, but I think they're going to get a foul on Jackson. Yeah, Eric, just to finish that point, Jace Dawson, it shows here on the roster, he's six foot one. I, I, I've, I've got to disagree with that. I've been yeah. down the court with Jace Dawson. He's filling in for Jackson Club. I think he's closer to six foot four uh, than he is six foot one. So I think one of the things just for the fans to know is that uh, Jace Dawson's coming in here really as a third big man along with Clope and uh, Parrish. You can go ahead and make that change on my scorecard. I agree with you that six foot four is a bit more accurate representation. As the free throw is no good. Rebound to McCracken County as the Mustangs a possession. Straight away, it's Jay Mark. Mustangs up 32-15. As Jackson goes into the corner to Fulcher, straight away to Martin. Thought about the three, goes back to Fulcher. As Fulcher splits a double team, goes to Jackson. Back to Martin. He's open. He'll spot up another three. No good. Rebound Miller, though, as Miller... That was just sheer effort between two Vikings, and he's fouled on the floor. You know, Eric, one of the things is we don't talk about enough is Connor Miller. It's his vertical jump. It's just devastating. A guy six foot one, you know, I think he can get way up on the glass, and that was just a great example of his vertical jump. It was actually deflected on the inbounds pass back to Fulcher. Problem for him, he wasn't expecting to be deflected back to him, and he was out of bounds. Yeah, it, it, when you're out of bounds and you catch the ball, hey, it's simply going to the That's other right. team. It will be St. Mary the possession, 20 seconds left. The Mustangs up 32-15 here in the second quarter. Vikings waiting for the last shot. As Sims thought about a step back three, goes to Hahn, 17-footer, no good. Full court heave from Fulcher is pretty close. That will do it for the end of the second quarter. After two quarters of play, Mustangs on top, 32-15. First half scoring, SS Chiropractic, second half adjustments coming up. 99-5 the fam. Craig Culver on Culver's Salted Caramel Concrete Mixers. Summer just isn't complete without this treat. We take our frozen custard and add salted caramel. Then pick your favorite mix in cookie dough, brownie pieces, or how about Reese's peanut butter cup? We spin it by hand. I love seeing that caramel swirl through the custard. There it is. Come on in for the Culver's Salted Caramel Concrete Mixer. Welcome to delicious. Stop in at Culver's on Highway 60 in Paducah. Burrito After Dark is Paducah's new favorite Tex-Mex spot. Delicious burritos, trashy nachos, maxed out nachos, shrimp tacos with fresh cooked shrimp, and it's all customizable. Wrap up all that great food with some live entertainment, and you've got the perfect girls' night or date night. Burrito After Dark isn't just for adults. Families are always welcome. They're the home of daily fresh-made salsa and guac. And if that wasn't enough, book your next event at their 80-capacity space. Burrito After Dark in the old Fat Moe's downtown Paducah. If you live with pain, you have good days and bad days. You deserve a pain-free life. And the first step is talking with your doctor about pain management with Dr. Ferdinand Salvacion at the Orthopedic Institute of Western Kentucky Pain Center. Dr. Salvacion specializes in pain management and will work with you to get you back to those good days. Talk to your primary care provider about pain management with Dr. Salvacion at the Orthopedic Institute of Western Kentucky. Hey guys, what do you want to do for dinner? I want pizza. Well, I want a salad. I'm in the mood for some pasta. I want ice cream. Sounds like we're going to Pizza Inn. Yay! Yay! Pizza Inn is home to the area's largest buffet and salad bar. They also offer options for pickup, delivery, DoorDash, and even catering. Pizza Inn, where everybody wins. Locally owned since 1972. Located at 1001 Joe Clifton Drive in Paducah. If you've ever had a pinched nerve, you know how excruciating the pain can be. I'm Bill Hughes, and when my pinched nerve sent pain shooting down my arm or down my sciatic nerve into my leg, 
I turned to the Back Brothers at Estes Chiropractic. The Back Brothers alleviated my pain, treated my problem, and got me back on the running trail. When you need relief, you can rely on the Back Brothers. Estes Chiropractic. Doctors Kelly and Kevin Estes, the Back Brothers. Estes Chiropractic Center in Paducah. EstesChiropracticCenter.com. At CFSB, we're your ultimate business partner. Our business development team is ready to help you with personal banking that suits your unique goals, along with top-notch business services to streamline your operations. Need capital to fuel your business dreams? Our business lending solutions have gotten you covered. From small startups to established enterprises, we're here to support your growth every step of the way. Simplify your business journey today. Visit any of our eight banking centers or explore our website at yourlifeyourbank.com to discover the convenience of a true one-stop shop. Your success is our business. Together, let's make it happen. CFSB, member FDI. I see equal housing lender. Discover the difference that comes from a financial partner committed to building better tomorrows. I'm Darren Rudolph with Baird Private Wealth Management in Paducah. As a provider of trusted financial services in Paducah, Baird is committed to making the future brighter for you and for our community. That's why we support local organizations like United Way and West Kentucky Fellowship of Christian Athletes because we care about Paducah. Discover the Baird difference. Visit paducah.bairdwealth.com. Taking care of your family isn't always easy, so we make sure getting care when you need it is. With Baptist Health Urgent and Virtual Care, we bring you more options and greater convenience, too. With video visits available 24-7 and online check-in through MyChart for in-person visits. To check in online or to set up a video visit, go to baptisthealth.com slash care anywhere. Christmas shopping, running your budget low? McDonald's can help. For a real deal, look for a buy one, get one for $1 with the purchase of a McDouble, a McChicken, or a four-piece nugget. And for breakfast, you can still have a buy one, get one for $1 with a sausage biscuit, a sausage McMuffin, or a sausage McGriddle. And don't forget your peppermint mocha. That will get you in the holiday spirit. Have last-minute shopping to do? McDonald's can help with that, too. Gift cards are always a perfect fit. Get yours today and have a very Merry Christmas from McDonald's. Times are running out to vote for the People's Choice Awards on West Kentucky Star. If you want your favorites to win, you better put the scoot on. Go to contest at westkentuckystar.com and vote for your favorite. Women's Fashion Boutique, Annabelle's Gift Boutique, Nail Salon, Half Moon Nails, Taryn Hayden, Mexican Food, El Tequila Mexican Restaurant Metropolis. Voting is almost over for the People's Choice Awards on West Kentucky Star. You can vote once per category per day. Vote early, vote often. It's the Chicago way. Vote today for the People's Choice Awards on West Kentucky Star. It may not require a textbook, but it's filled with valuable lessons. It may not take place in a classroom, but it's an ideal environment for learning. It may not involve a diploma, but it can help prepare Kentucky's young people for life. It's high school sports. High school sports can play a critical role in a student's overall education. In fact, studies show that students that participate in high school sports are more likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in their academic lives. If you think high school sports are only about competition, think again. Better yet, think about attending a high school sporting event in your community. You'll be amazed by what you see. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Kentucky High School Athletic Association and the Kentucky High School Athletic Directors Association. Taking care of your family isn't always easy, so we make sure getting care when you need it is. With Baptist Health Urgent and Virtual Care, we bring you more options and greater convenience, too. 
with video visits available 24-7 and online check-in through MyChart for in-person visits. To check in online or to set up a video visit, go to baptisthealth.com slash care anywhere. Mustangs up at the half right now, 32 to 15 as we welcome you back. Yeah, beautiful Strawberry Hills Pharmacy Arena on the campus of McCracken County High School. McCracken County, um, look at the first half scoring is it was pretty balanced for the Mustangs. 12 points for Jackson Clope, six points for Connor Miller, six points for Jay Martin, six points for Dylan Jackson, two points for Jace Dawson to round out the scoring. For St. Mary, five points for Owen Michael, five points for Luke Sims, four points for Aiden Hunt to round out the scoring for the Vikings as we look at the Estes chiropractic second half adjustments. And uh, for the first uh, quarter for the Mustangs in this game, it was a solid first quarter. Yeah, Eric, I think one of the things we saw for the Mustangs in that first quarter was really a well-executed offense. And like I said, I think that was a change from what we saw last night at Marshall County. And not only were the Mustangs really shooting the ball accurately, but they were doing a great job distributing around the perimeter and getting the ball into the paint. So they were really doing a great job there in the first quarter. A little colder, a little slower there in the second quarter. Granted, they had about a 17 to 20 point lead there in the second quarter, but a little slow down offensively. So I really like to see a reset here in the third quarter, see the Mustangs get back to that same crisp, deliberate passing that we saw out around the perimeter, finding either Parrish or Clope open in the paint for some easy baskets and continue to shoot the ball as well as they did in the first quarter. So I think I'd like to see kind of a replica or duplicate of that first quarter here in the third and fourth quarter for the, for the Mustangs. And so for McCracken County, continuing the pressure defense. Yeah, Eric, you know, we talked at the beginning of the game of these two guys, uh, Michael and uh, Sims, both of those guys averaging 22 and 23 points respectfully for St. Mary's. I think, Eric, the defense, the pressure defense, allow the Vikings only to put 15 points on the board. They're averaging closer to 71 a game. So you really got to give hats off to the Mustangs. They're playing great defense, keeping a lot of pressure on these guys, not allowing them to have open shots. I think, Eric, to continue to keep this double-digit lead, we need to play the same defense in the second half we played in the first half. And so that is your Estes chiropractic second half adjustments. When you need that back adjustment, go see the back brothers. Kevin and Kelly Estes of Estes Chiropractic Central Avenue in Paducah. It's a good St. Mary ball club. Mustangs just, I think, a little bit aggravated after their disappointing loss to Marshall County last night. Yeah, Eric, you know, one of the things you hate to play a team, a good team, especially like the Mustangs that come off a loss like we did last night, that always makes the intensity level a little bit greater for us to get back, for the Mustangs to get back on the winning side of it. I think that's what we saw in that first half. So the Mustangs start with the basketball to start this third quarter, it will be Jackson behind the back pass to Martin. Down low to Miller, back out to Martin. And now Martin, a baseline drives, cut off, gives it back, and it's going to be a blocking foul that sent Jay Martin into the front row. It will be McCracken to inbound sideline out of bounds. Yeah, Eric, I think Coach Denson, he, you know, he cranked his defense up in that second quarter. That added a little bit to the slowdown for the Mustangs on the on the offensive end, I think they're coming out just as with as, just as much pressure here in the third quarter as we saw in the second quarter. To Parrish on the wing, cross court picked off and stolen. There's a nice job by Brett Haas. Gives it back to Sims. Back to Haas, baseline drive, and it's going to be a foul on Jackson. And that will be McCracken's first foul of the third quarter. Yeah, Eric, and that's Dylan Jackson's second foul so far. I mean, granted, we're in the second half. Yes, last night he picked up three in the first half, but we want to keep an eye on that. We don't want Dylan Jackson to get in foul trouble like he did last night. Is it St. Mary to possession? As Sims for the Vikings. Goes on the left-hand side to Hahn. And picked off and stolen by Klopp for the dunk. Jackson Klopp with 14. And so seven minutes in this third quarter. It will be St. Mary the possession. On the left-hand side, it's Aiden Hahn. Now goes into the corner, gives it back to Hahn. Straight away, it's to Haas. Swung on the right side to Sims. As Sims turns top of the key, lost it for a moment, and fighting for it 
It's going to be fought for again in a timeout by Coach Chase Denson, a 30-second timeout. Vikings with two timeouts left. Yeah, Eric, was good that Chase Denson got that timeout there. It looked like it was going to be a turnover. I mean, Connor Miller really had him tied up, so to speak, and then Dylan Jackson had stuck in the back door there and was really reaching over his shoulder to really pull that ball out and get a fast break. So that was a smart timeout by Coach Denson there. Otherwise, his team would have had a turnover, and now you're already a minute, minute, 15 seconds deep in this third quarter, and you look up at the scoreboard, and they still have 15 points. So, you know, hats off to the Mustangs. They continue to play good defense as they did in that first half, almost a turnover there without a timeout. So, you know, Eric, I like the start so far that we've seen in the Mustangs on both ends of the court so far in this first minute and 15 seconds. 6.46 here in the third quarter. Mustangs on top. 34-15, and we resume play. Vikings possession. As it is going to be a screen on the right-hand side. Now working towards the low block is Aiden Hahn. Nice pass into the corner. A three from Durbin, no good. Rebound comes down to Klope. He will race the other way. Klope all the way to the rim. Puts it up. No good, but he's fouled. Another coast-to-coast -coast drive there by Klope. Was able to almost finish, but go to the line of shoot, too. Yeah, Eric, you know, we've talked about that since the beginning of the season. That's something we didn't see in Jackson Globe last year. He just wasn't that type of athlete. But this year, I mean, he, he's strong on the boards. And then when he gets it, sometimes he gets that, like I said, ahead of steam. And he's trucking for the other end, and he did right there. He did take it to the rim. If he wasn't fouled, it would have been an easy uh, two-point basket for Jackson Globe. As the free throw is no good, rebound comes down, and it's going to be an over-the-back foul on Grayson Parrish. Yeah, Eric, a little bit of an unnecessary foul by Grayson Parrish. Really, it looked like Hawes had already come down with that rebound. Grayson was a little bit frustrated and ended up reaching in there and getting kind of what you want to call a cheap foul. And so the Vikings with it. It is going to be Sims out top. Arcs towards the left-hand side. Now picked off by Klope. Klope all the way to the rim for the dunk. Eric gets three dunks so far in this game. His second one here in the second half. So Jackson, he's doing a great job anticipating those passes across the middle and just picking them off. And then a near steal. In fact, it is by Jackson. Jackson lost it for a moment. Gives it off to Miller. Layup good. That's three fast breaks, Eric, here in the first two minutes. I mean, Chase Denson, he's calling another timeout, Eric. I think Coach Denson is really frustrated with the Vikings, how they're handling the ball down here on the offensive end. I mean, the Mustangs, the Jackson, did, Jackson Cloak did it the last time. This time it was Dylan Jackson just doing a great job, just cutting the, cutting the Vikings off when they're trying to pass the ball out above the key there, trying to get it across the court and find an open shooter. The Mustangs are doing a good job anticipating it, cutting off the passes, getting the turnovers, and then getting the fast break. So you got to admit, Eric, you know, right now you're better than two minutes into this third quarter, and the Vikings have not. I don't know that they've really gotten off but one shot so far uh, in this third quarter. So overall, a dominating performance by the Mustangs defensively, and you got to say the, the result of that is the Vikings are struggling from an offensive standpoint. And now for McCracken County, a 38-15 to 15 lead. With 5.49 left in this quarter, the Mustangs off to a great start. Yeah, Eric, Coach Roberts has got to be happy. He's got to be happy with his team in that first half coming out of Marshall County, but he's got to really be happy with his team so far in this first two minutes of this third quarter. They have kept up the intensity level we saw in the first quarter in particular, returned to that same effort here in the third quarter. Coach Roberts and the staff's got to be pleased so far with the start of this second half. So St. Mary, the possession as the Vikings with it. It is going to be Willett. Now left-hand side it goes to Hahn. Back to Sims. Sims gives it off to Herdlicka. To Sims. As Sims all the way towards the low block. Turns against his defender. Blocked by Klope. Comes up to Jay Martin. As Martin... All the way to the rim, he's going to be fouled. So Jay will go shoot two. Eric, one of the things is I don't know that we've mentioned for the fans at home, I think that's the fourth block shot tonight by Jackson Klope, if I'm, if I'm counting correctly. I believe you are. I think that is correct. I thought Martin was shooting. They're going to say he was not. 
And so the Mustangs will have it. Connor Miller will step into a three. No good. Rebound comes out to St. Mary. Sims straight away picks up his dribble, goes on the wing, and gives it to her Lickett. Now down low, a floater up. No good from Owen Michael. Rebound comes down to Klopp. Klopp the other way for the Mustangs. Goes on the wing to Jackson. And Jackson's double team stolen by the Vikings. On the return, Hahn, nice pass to Sims. Puts it up no good, but he's found. Yeah, Eric, that was a, that's really the first bad offensive uh, series we've seen the Mustangs have since the second quarter. I mean, they played great in the first quarter, a little bit off there in the second quarter. Been looking good here so far in the third quarter. It's the first offensive series that just ended in a turnover. As the first free throw is good by Luke Sims. As Jace Dawson checks in, next free throw is good. 38-17, the Mustangs on top, 445 in the third quarter. Mustangs on the return. As Dawson out to Jay Martin, swung left side. Now back towards the right side to Dawson as he lost it for a moment. And it is fought for controlled by the Vikings, who will return it as Sims. In between two defenders, gets to the rim, puts it in. Eric, that's probably the best fast break we've seen out of the Vikings all night. Probably one of the best offensive uh, efforts we've seen tonight from the Vikings. It will be Fulcher to Martin to Dawson. Down low, it's to Cloak. It gives it out. A mid-range jump shot from Fulcher is good. Yeah, Eric, that was a nice series of passing there. Dawson inside to Cloak. Cloak back outside to Fulcher for an easy 15-footer. And so the Vikings with it, as it will be for the Vikings. Luke Sims goes on the right-hand side to Jackson Willett. Now off of the screen, it's to Owen Michael. Michael powers his way, but it's blocked by Jay Martin, which causes a jump ball that will stay with the Vikings. Eric, that was a nice effort by Jay Martin. I mean, it was close. It could have been called a foul, but to be honest with you, Jay did a good job. He just got all ball on that defensive effort. It's down low, a layup up and in. It's good by Owen Michael. And so the Mustangs into the front court as Connor Miller goes out top to Fulcher. Swung right side to Martin to Fulcher. Into the corner to Jace Dawson. He's going to pump a right side three and bury it. Eric, that's part of Jace Dawson's game you and I have not seen. You know, he played some last night. He played that. I'd really think he would be inside the paint, but that was a nice three-pointer from the corner. 43-21, Mustangs by 22. Three minutes in the third. It's a left side three coming from Willits. Good. That makes it 43-24 now. Mustangs on top. As the Mustangs enter it into the front court, down low it goes to Klopp, hands it off to Dawson, layup, no good, rebound tipped around, it's going to be out of bounds off St. Mary. Eric, that was another good effort. I mean, Connor did a good job finding Jackson Klopp open on his side of the court right there at the paint, and then it looked like Jackson Klopp was going to take it up. He made that extra pass to a wide open Jace Dawson. He missed an easy layup. Fulcher to inbound to Klope. He's going to take a three and bury it. Eric, is that five? Is of all five? Well, Grayson Parrish had made a three-pointer, but if you count Chase Dawson, five of these guys so far made three-pointers. That's right. Is then a St. Mary three, no good. Comes back out to Sims. His three, no good. Rebound comes down to Jackson Klope. He lost it for a moment. St. Mary takes it away as it goes now to Hahn. Hahn straight away. A three coming from Owen Michaels. Good. It's raining threes. 46-27. Mustangs on top. 2-10 left in the third quarter. It is on the left side to Miller. Now to Jace Dawson underneath. It's his layup. It's good. Eric, he's having a good game. I, you know, I thought he played good against Marshall County, but he's really playing good here this afternoon against St. Mary's. He's got seven. Mustangs lead 48-27. St. Mary, the possession. It is going to be straight away. Aiden Hahn now gives it to Sims. As Sims he is going to be fouled. So Sims will shoot two. 
Eric, it looks like uh, Coach Jensen, he wants his guys to drive it a little bit more in the lane than they did the first half, and they've been successful. It puts a little bit of foul pressure on the Mustangs as well. So interesting, a little bit of change in offensive theory here uh, for the Vikings in the second half from what we saw in the first two quarters. So uh, moisture on the floor. It is going to be a foul on the floor that they're going to give the Mustangs, or the Vikings, I'm sorry, underneath. So the Vikings will inbound it as it goes in on the left-hand side to Herdlicka. Now to Owen Michael as Michael goes to the left side. Into the lane with it is Hahn all the way to the rim. He puts it in. 48-29, Mustangs on top. As it is Fulcher to Halls. And now to Cloak underneath the Dawson. He's got it. You know, Eric, we talked about Jackson Cloak's in, interior passing last night at Marshall County. That was that's two nice passes to Dawson. Indeed. Now makes it 50 to 29. The Mustangs on top. Is all the way to the rim. A floater up. No good. Rebound comes down to Jackson Clope. He races the other way. As Clope, nice pass to Halls, but then nice job by Sims to take it away. Sims on the return for the Vikings. Goes right side. Hans, three. Got it. Eric, you got to give a, a little bit of credit to the Vikings. Chase Dinson and his staff, they've made a nice change at halftime and been much more productive offensively here in this third quarter. 50 to 32. Mustangs on top. As Clope surrounded. And he's found on the floor. That will be the fourth team foul for the Vikings. David Deneve checks in for the final 31 seconds of this third quarter. As Fulcher will inbound it to Jace Dawson. Now out to Halls. Swung left side to Fulcher. Now on the right side to Halls. 20 seconds here in the third quarter. To Jackson. Mustang showing patience for the final seconds. To Fulcher. Now to Halls. His three at the buzzer is perfect as Carter Halls gets into the scoring to end the third quarter. After three quarters of play, the Mustangs up on St. Mary, 50 to 32 in overall, Jimmy. A good quarter there for both squads, 18 to 17 in the scoring in favor of McCracken County that quarter. St. Mary, as you said, made some adjustments at the half, but uh, the Mustangs still extend the lead by a point. Yeah, I think, Eric, you know, overall the Mustangs are having an excellent game. Let's just take a moment and talk a little bit about the Vikings. I think Chase Denson, made the adjustment at halftime. He wanted his guys to drive the ball in the paint, you know, try to get some easy baskets at the same time, try to pick up some fouls. And they've been successful in that. So far, they've had a number of drives in the paint. And I think that's really been what's equated to the scoring they've had of 17 points here in the second half. You go back and look at the Mustangs. I think, Eric, one of the things is I want to talk about quickly here about the Mustangs offense. One of the things is I can't say that we've seen so far this season is really this barrage of three-pointers that we've seen tonight out of the Mustangs. You know, a lot of that play, a lot of the scoring overall this season has come from particularly driving the ball in the paint and or Jackson Cloak getting rebounds and putting it back up in, his, in the paint as well. But tonight we've seen a number of shooters outside on the arc making three-pointers. I think there's either six or seven Mustangs so far tonight that have made three-pointers, including big guys like Jace Dawson and then Jackson Cloak. You know, Grayson Parrish picks up a three-pointer here. You got all three of your big guys shooting three-pointers tonight. To me, Eric, that's just another great addition that Coach Roberts would have to the offensive threat of the Mustangs. So I like what I'm seeing. I think the other thing is I want to comment on quickly before the ball is thrown in is just the interior passing, particularly by Jackson Clope. That's a big benefit for this team offensively. And so the Mustangs. We'll have it as it is the start of the fourth quarter. It's deflected out of bounds off St. Mary. The Mustangs will have it. 53-32, I misspoke as the scoreboard operator a little bit slower putting up that three to end the third quarter. Mustangs though up comfortably as it is gonna be Miller to Jackson to Dawson. 
And now to Miller in the corner to Hawes. He'll take another spot up three. This one is no good. Rebound it comes out to Jackson. His short jumper is no good. Rebound to St. Mary. 53-32. Mustangs on top. As a running floater in the lane, it's gone by Sims. A great move, taking it to the hole. Yeah, Eric, you know, like I talked there just a moment ago, I mean, Chase is just, Chase Stinson just has his team driving it to the rim. There's Sims. He drove with the length of the court. Connor Miller tried to cut him off, ended up fouling him. Now he's got a three-point opportunity. Free throw. Good. And so Sims with the end one. The Mustangs have it. 53-35, McCracken County. And a timeout for Coach Dustin Roberts. Is the Mustangs a little tardy against the press? To talk it over for just a second. Yeah, Eric, you know, one of the things out of that break right there, uh, Coach Denson called a full-court press. That's the first time we've seen him do a full-court press tonight. We know that's been a little bit of an Achilles heel to the Mustangs so far this season, particularly starting with that new Madrid game. The Mustangs having a little difficult time breaking that full-court press. We've talked about that some in our pregames, uh, keys to success. And here the Mustangs got caught off guard coming out of that break. The Vikings put the full-court press, and they didn't look like they were going to get it across the half-court line before the 10 count. So I think the situation there for Coach Roberts probably making a little adjustment there to remind these guys to pass the ball out of that full-court press and not try to dribble it out of the press. So the Mustangs on top, 53-35, 7-10 left in regulation. It will be into the front court to Parrish. Cross court to Jackson. DeHaul's in the corner. Back to Jackson. Swings it to Miller, to Parrish. He'll take a spot up left side three that's short. Rebound comes down to Miller. He is stripped. It's out of bounds off St. Mary. Oh, Eric, I was hoping Grayson made that three-pointer. We'd have all three big guys have three-pointers tonight. I was pulling for Grayson to sink that, and uh, he came up a little bit short. He did. It's, uh, it's Martin and Fulcher checking back in for the Mustangs. Halls and Parrish getting a breather. 53-35, Mustangs up as it is towards the right-hand side to Cloak. Now to Jackson, to Miller. Fulcher, Miller, Jackson. All around the perimeter. Four out, one in currently for the Mustangs against this 2-3 zone. Fulcher to Miller to Martin. As Martin, as the pass kicked, it will stay with McCracken County. Mustangs on top, 53-35. As it goes down low to Clope, layup's good. That's another, that was a nice interior pass there by Connor Miller over to Jackson Cloak. 55-35, Mustangs by 20. Comes out top to Willett. A straightaway three on the way is no good. Rebound comes down to Cloak, who also dabbies as a point guard. <laughs> Delivers it to nobody on the right-hand side. <laughs> He got a little bit too comfortable on that one. He did. You know, one of the things is, Erica, Jackson's doing a good job dribbling the ball and driving the length court. It makes me a little nervous. Yes. You know? It doesn't, to me, originally I wouldn't have thought that as part of this game. He likes doing it, it seems. <laughs> he does. It's a fun to watch, but that one got a little too confident, I think. As it is towards a low block, it's Haas. His shot blocked by Klope. It comes back to Martin. Up the right side to Jackson. Jackson, he turns, gets his men in the air, puts it up no good, but he's fouled. Eric, that, you know, I've been counting. I mentioned that earlier for Jackson Club. He had four blocks earlier, picked up another block there against Michael. That's his fifth block so far in this game. I've got to say, Eric, overall, that's probably the most blocks we've seen him have in a single game. I agree. Jackson's free throw is no good. He'll have one more. The next one for Dylan Jackson is no good. Rebound comes down to St. Mary. Vikings on the return. It is poked away for a moment, and it comes out to St. Mary. 55-35, Mustangs on top. Sims gets by his defender, met by Cloak, puts it up and in. Eric, I like the defense by Jackson Cloak there. He didn't pick up a cheap foul. He just held his ground there, didn't block the shot, but didn't pick up a foul either. So that was a smart decision by Jackson Cloak. 
And a traveling violation by Connor Miller shifted his pivot foot ever so slightly. And it will go back to the Vikings. 55-37. The Mustangs on top. And so St. Mary the possession as it goes down the far left side to Owen Michael. His three's perfect. Yeah, Eric, he's not the guy you want to leave wide open for a three-pointer there, and he was wide open there. Somebody lost track of uh, Michael there for an easy three-pointer. Left-hand side of the floor it goes as it's picked away and stolen by St. Mary. On the return come the Vikings as a floater by Sims, no good. It's going to be a foul, though, on McCracken County that will send St. Mary to the line to shoot two. Yeah, Eric, he's <clears throat> we're getting a little spurred here from the Vikings since they come out of that last time out. They've done a good job. It's two turnovers in a row they were able to pick up off the Mustangs. They're able to make these two free throws here. They've converted them into five points. So a little swing here in the game just for a moment by the Vikings. The free throw coming for St. Mary is no good as Sims short on the first. He will have one more. Second free throw is good. Sims makes one of two, 55-41. The Mustangs on top. It is going to be Jay Martin for the Mustangs. As Jay up the right sideline, but he stepped out of bounds. It will go back to St. Mary. Eric has three turnovers in a row for the Mustangs. The That's Mustangs, right. there's still 435 left on this clock, and the Vikings have cut the lead down to 14 points. They get a basket here and maybe one more. They could get it underneath double digits. So the Mustangs need to settle down here in their offensive possessions remainder of this game. Crazier things have happened. Is St. Mary with it on the block? Strong power dribble. Layup no good. Rebound comes down to McCracken County. Is Jackson on the return? It's poked away and stolen by Sims. Up the floor it goes to Hahn. His layup missed. Rebound tipped up no good. As St. Mary again goes back up, no good. Rebound out of bounds off McCracken County to St. Mary. Eric, uh, right now the Vikings continue. Looks like Coach Roberts is frustrated. Indeed. I think he's frustrated. He, uh, he's had enough of what he saw over the last, I want to say, two minutes. Uh, that's three out of four times the Mustangs have taken the ball down on the offensive side and ended up turning it over. Fortunately for the Mustangs, the Vikings missed one of those two free throws and actually missed two layups there. They actually had a layup, got the rebound back, put it back up at the rim, ended up missing it as well. So quite frankly, Eric, right now when you look up at the scoreboard, the Vikings could have three more points on the board out of turnovers and make this 11-point game. So that's been a little bit of a break for the Mustangs. But I think Coach Roberts got tired of what the turnovers he saw right in front of him the last three times or last four, three out of four times down the court and has decided to call a timeout and get these guys calmed down a little bit and get them back in rhythm that we've seen pretty much the rest of the game. And so the Mustangs on top 55-41. This will be the last game for the Mustangs before their Marshall County tournament coming up on Wednesday. And so they'll be in Marshall County Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We will have those games here on 99.5 The Fan. Tuesday we will be in Louisville. Our McCracken County and the Lady Mustangs take on Taylor County at 3 p.m. Central Time. Right here on 99.5 The Fan. So St. Mary will have it underneath their own basket. Mustangs on top, 55-41. Vikings of possession. As it goes into the corner to Owen Michael. As Michael, cross court now, swung out top. A three coming from Sims is perfect. Cuts it to 11, 55-44. The Mustangs on top. Jay Martin up the floor as it goes to Miller as Connor Miller turns. Gives it cross court now to Martin. Now to Fulcher. Swung down low to Miller. Layup's good. Oh, Eric, that was a nice play by Caden Fulcher. He found Connor Miller wide open in the paint for an easy basket. 57-44. The Mustangs is a three coming right side. No good. Rebounds tipped around. Comes out to McCracken County. Connor, nice pass to Jackson. Layup's good. Eric, that's uh, that's what Coach Roberts wanted to see out of that timeout. The Mustangs came out of that must out of that timeout now and converted two baskets for a quick four points. 59-44. The Mustangs on top. As a 17-footer is no good. Rebound is tipped around. Comes down to Clope. Is Clope the other way? 
bullpen had poked away, but he's fouled. Yeah, Eric, Jackson, that was another one of those drives coast to coast, and it granted at times he's successful, but like I said, it makes me a little bit nervous. Sometimes I'd like to see Jackson feed that out to one of the guards and let them do a little bit more ball handling on the fast break. It will be the Mustangs with the possession, leading 59-44. And so, 248 left in the game. Martin to Miller into the corner. Now out to Fulcher, strung towards Jackson to Martin. To Jackson to Fulcher to Martin, just around the perimeter. Now Miller in the corner, down low to Klo. Turns, puts one up, it's good. Klo with 22, nope 24, excuse me. By my unexact count, So St. Mary, the possession as Sims gives out left side. And now into the paint, kicked right side. That goes to Herdlicka. And Sims, he'll shoot the three and bury it. Eric Sims and Michael, you can see why they average 22 and 23 points apiece, respectfully. Both of them good shooters. And it will be up the floor to Clope. Clope attacks. He'll float one up and went down hard. As it comes down, it's going to be a... Jump ball that will go to St. Mary. I didn't see that. I don't think Coach Roberts did either. Uh, it will be St. Mary ball. I didn't really see the ball tied up. I, I didn't either. Dylan Jackson had it. I thought Dylan Jackson was going to go back up for a shot. So I'm like you, Eric. I didn't see that at all. And so the Vikings have it with a minute 44 left. 61-47. Mustangs on top. As it is into the right corner, a, th a three from Hahn is no good. Rebound comes down to Cloak. Gives it off to Jackson. He'll walk it up for McCracken County. Jay Martin to Miller. Right side to Jackson. As Jackson had it poked away, gets it back, and had it poked away again. It's a timeout by Coach Roberts. 30-second timeout with a minute 21 left. As the Mustangs on top, 61 to 47. Join us Tuesday in Louisville. The Mustangs and Lady Mustangs uh, take on Taylor County. That will be a 3 p.m. start for the Lady Mustangs and Taylor County and the Queen of the Commonwealth. Then booking it back here, be in Marshall County the Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week for the Mustangs and their action. Tis the season, my friend. For Christmas tournaments. Yeah, Eric, and, you know, we're going to get to see some good basketball. That game over at, Louis, over at Louisville you talked about with Taylor County is going to be a really good game, as Coach Sibbles talked about. And then the Mustangs over here at Marshall County are going to have some big challenges as well. So, you know, overall, Eric, leading into Christmas, we've talked about it all year long, all season long, that both the Lady Mustangs and Mustangs had some really tough games here in, the, in December leading into January, and that's really going to crank up a good bit in some of those games next week. And then after Christmas, we will be in Poplar Bluff, Missouri, as McCracken County will be uh, in the Poplar Bluff Christmas Invitational. That will be after Christmas. We will have that coverage for you, 99.5 The Fan. Lady Mustangs will be in Florida. And then, of course, after Christmas, we will have the January schedule full of Region 1 games. It will be the Mustangs with it, and the Mustangs about to play a fun game of keep away from the Vikings as Miller has it on the left side, cross court to Martin. Martin into the corner to Jackson, back to Martin, puts the left hand dribble down to Fulcher to Clope. Clope turns back to Martin, but into the coaching staff it goes, in which Coach Shepard pounds the basketball into the ground. Well, I think the part is he really passed it to Coach Roberts. I mean, he's open. He is. He's just out of bounds, but he, Coach Roberts was open there on the end of the bench, and it was a nice pass to him. And Coach Shumpert took out his frustrations on the basketball when it ricocheted to him. Vikings win it. The Mustangs up 61-47. Final 45 seconds of regulation as it goes now into the floor. Floating jump shot up and in. Nice job in the post from Owen Michael. 61-49. Mustangs by 12. Jay Martin in the backcourt gives it to Fulcher. Up the floor to Miller to Clope. Six foot five cloak down to Jackson for the layup. Eric, that's the way you break the press right there. Those were four really nice passes. Mustangs up 63 49. Sims is going to be found on the floor. 
That will be St. Mary having it underneath their own basket, 19 seconds left. Yeah, Eric, we've got to give a little bit of hats off to the Vikings. They scored 15 points in the first uh, half. They've scored 34 so far in the second half. So nice adjustments overall for St. Mary's. Underneath, layup up and in by Landon Durbin. Mustangs, final possession, 10 seconds left. And Jay Martin will walk it into the front court. It goes to Connor Miller. And the Mustangs victorious this afternoon, winning it. Final score, 63-51. to McCracken County moves to 6-2 on the year. St. Mary drops to 3-4 on the year. McCracken County now 2-0 inside the second district. And overall, a good win for the Mustangs this afternoon. Who had a nice bounce back after the disappointing loss at Marshall County last night. Yeah, Eric, you know, we talked about that disappointing loss just 24 hours ago and how well the Mustangs would bounce back. I mean, I think what we saw here was a lot of intensity that we didn't see last night at Marshall County. We certainly have seen it on the defensive end, holding the Vikings to just 15 points in that first half. That was really good defense. Granted, the Vikings did end up putting about 36 points on the board here in the second half, but I think we got to give some credit to the Vikings there. They made some nice offensive adjustments. I think the other thing is, Eric, that really stands out at, to me so far in this game that we watched here tonight that I've not witnessed so far with the Mustangs is the three-point shooting. Man, that really cranked up. I'll be interested to see these final stats, but I know we got at least six, maybe seven of the Mustangs on the board shooting out at the perimeter 